Good job. Welcome to Craig Facts Callback Show slash a whole bunch of other shit. Yes, Roast with the whole slash all kind of stuff. Yes, hey, man, make sure y'all stream this. If you anywhere you stream audio, you can listen to this. You don't always have to be live to watch us. Or you can listen to us. Listen to If it. you drive trucks, you can listen to us while you drive. Hell yeah, nigga. If you got cross long country. Hey, cross country. If you got a long ride to work every morning, you can listen to us there. There. You can listen to us there or be a square. Uh-huh. How was your weekend, John? All right, man, my weekend was cool, bro. Uh, we shot a, we shot a couple scenes, man, of a new little project that we're doing, man. I think it's going to be pretty dope. Hell yeah, I'm excited about that once we start editing that thing up. What's the name of the project? Hey, man, it's called L.A. Times. Nickerson and Gardens. Niggas and Gardens Supreme. Nah, it's like L.A. Times, man. This shenanigans that that that, uh, that happen in L.A. all the time that we all know about. And basically, it happens in everybody's hood, too, but it's just L.A. specifically. So. I play a pizza delivery driver whose route is dedicated strictly to the Nickerson Gardens and the Imperial Courts. It's about my struggle uh, delivering red pepperonis to a crip neighborhood. And what happens is a lot of things gangster go on in which I survive. Yeah. I really shit, think nigga, it's, next time you bring up bring up this motherfucker to cuz, yeah. nigga, make sure the motherfucking pepperonis die blue. <laughs> make sure you got blue blueberry color, pepperonis. Blue, 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 <laughs> blueberry ronies, nigga. Blue ronies. Blue ronies. Uh-huh. Well, do what you got to do. Flatten out a uh, blueberry or something. You know what I'm saying? But it better not be no red it's pepperoni. Cayenne peppers and paprika on the motherfucking blueberry. Uh, Let the bitch out make the pepperoni. So this rogue crip chef is my enemy in this. Yeah. yeah you know, his, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, Crip- this Cetrius. The Citrus Romaine Johnson. The Citrus Romaine Johnson. This is some of the most epic writing in the history. DRJ. Uh, DRJ. <laughs> the the Citrus is the name. <laughs> the Citrus. The Citrius. Hey, man, I pull the wool over your eyes all uh, the time. Yeah, the the Citrius. Yeah, his, this is my blood. His mother is the greatest uh, hood candy store lady in the history of hood candy stores. She used to have candy apples on a regular basis at her at her hood candy store. Yeah. You ever bought a candy apple out of out of hood candy house? Yeah. yeah. Really? My sister has. She uh, candy apples, uh candy pickles, right. uh sour pickles, uh, anything nigga in your hood nigga you can do anything to a pickle. Uh, after the, it's pickled. The one where I grew up used they used to fry bacon for Come on man. Yeah man. Nigga uh I had that? a I had a chili cheese house. Chili Cheese Frito House. Okay, candy yeah. Candy House. Yeah. Um, yeah, my sister used to sell the, my, the lollipops. You put Jolly Ranchers over them, and now later they melt the motherfuckers over the Jolly Ranchers. Oh, yeah, some creativity. You can go to school, and make a bread. She come yeah. back with $150. As a grown get, man. Middle school. I don't see how you're letting strange people in your house to buy candy. Because my mom, we had a candy house. That shit was weird. Hey, but no, she, uh, we had one upstairs from the, our apartment complex, and you had to go to the door. And it, oh, the door was open. There was a, there was a fence. I mean, there was a, a, a door, a, a desk, and a chair with like the, all the little uh, paper uh, pictures of all the candy behind you. And she went to go get that shit. Could nobody come in the house except me. I was a neighbor, but right. And across next door was uh, my nigga Fred house. It was his house. Was the icy house. Really, icy's and shit. I forgot about icy's. Icy. Yeah, man, I miss those days. Hey, nigga. And and here's the thing. I wonder if the hood still got that. Of course it does. But I ain't seen it. I ain't seen it. Nigga, remember yeah. the donut truck? The donut truck used to come by. We don't live in the hood no more. That's what I'm saying, bro. We yeah. do not live in the hood I'm no so more. Far, I'm so far removed, my So when I go back, this I just be like, man, I love this place. I went back for Juneteenth. Did you? Yeah. To 94? Uh, no, no, no. To, uh, to, to, to La Merc. Merc. Um, but I couldn't even get a park, my It was cracking this year. You know, we've been there the last year and the last year before that. Yeah. This year, nigga, it was way crazier, bro. You know, as you get old, we used to go deep. As I get older, I don't like going places deep no more. Nah. It's just just, just not cool. I feel like, you talking about with with a gang of niggas? Yeah. Because he was young, nigga, too. Right. Nigga, if you want to go to the movies, bro, nigga, Uh, I got got to get like three, four, five Man. To go with me. And that's my small deep, nigga. Right, awesome. right, right, right. Like, imagine being like eight, nine, ten. We, we take up a whole fucking row because we had to, bro. It might be pro- it might be problems for you. You see a nigga yourself, one, two, three nigga. Nah. Right. There's always somebody up. disgruntled in the group. Uh huh. And that's what I. This nigga ain't getting no numbers. He not getting no numbers at the mall. <laughs> he want to leave and shit, or he want to start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to that disgruntled. Nigga. 
Adulthood is tough for you. I know, nigga. It, it, it didn't get better for me. <laughs> it didn't get better for him, nigga. I love you, my nigga. You know what I'm talking about, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We know. We all know the guy. He's working security at Thrifty's right now. He's yeah, 50, nigga. He's 48. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thrifty's ain't even around. It's right it's eight, eight now. It's right eight now, nigga. Yeah. Uh-huh. But, uh, yeah, man, a bunch, of, a bunch of stuff is going on culturally this weekend. It's the 4th of July. Amen. It's Independence Day. Uh-huh. Our 4th of July was last month, but yeah. Yeah, ours was last month. Yeah. Shout out to Crispus Atticus and his descendants. Crispus Atticus was the mm-hmm. first man to be killed in the Revolutionary War. He was black. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he was shot. He was shot. withered. He withered yeah. away and died for the name of this country and the freedom of the people who lived here a few hundred years ago. Yeah. What do you know about Fourth of July? Uh, it's their holiday, man. It's not ours because we wasn't we wasn't um officially free. Everybody didn't know that they was officially free. You know what I'm saying? So um, yeah, man. I celebrate it just for the for the fact that it's a uh it's a holiday that you can be at, you can be at the crib barbecuing the shit doing fireworks. But as a grown man now, I don't really care too much about it. Right. Um, I'm more especially now that Juneteenth is. Is more prevalent in the world today in the country. I, I'm more. I'm, I'm more focused on that. I'm more excited about Juneteenth than about Fourth of July. To be honest with you, really? Yeah. Okay, I respect that. I mm-hmm. respect that all day. I, I mess yeah. with Juneteenth. Mm-hmm. You se- so you uh, have you ever celebrated it at your house? Or uh, most people go celebrate Juneteenth with a bunch of people they barely know, right? So I, I think black, you know, that's a holiday we we need. It's sacred, but we need to celebrate it amongst ourselves. It's a crib. I'm not really celebratory, so I'm not a nigga that throws a lot of parties. My wife and we wanted to throw a, an event every holiday. Let's do something for Fourth of July. Let's do something for Juneteenth. Let's do something for uh for Hanukkah. I mean, not even Jewish. Let's do something for I mean Christmas. I, I get that. Let's do some Hanukkah shit. I mean, some some uh Kwanzaa shit. But like, yeah, I don't be throwing. I I go to your party, but I'm not really gonna throw my own. I throw more now because my wife. Kind of makes me and shit, but for the most part, I just be trying to just chill. Do you know the real Fourth of July is actually the second Congress? Second? Vo- yeah, Congress voted on July second. Mm. So that's a, that's the actual real day, July second, seventeen. Why? Why they make it the fourth? You know, uh, that's the day we celebrate our nation's Independence Day. We celebrate on the fourth since it was the day the Declaration of Independence was formally adopted. So they they, they so two days ago, two days prior, they is when they, they voted. voted and. The fourth is when it actually was launched, basically. Right. You know, President Zachary Taylor died July 4th, 1850, after eating spoiled fruit following his 4th of July speech. Damn. Damn, Zachary! And they had a bad apple, literally. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, that's crazy. Yep. Yeah. 1781, Massachusetts became the first state to declare the 4th of July an official state holiday. Mm. Didn't know that till now. Say that one more time. The, uh, Massachusetts is the first state to declare a four, the 4th of July mm. an official state holiday. Okay. Mass. Yes. The Liberty Bell in Philadelphia is tapped 13 times every day, every July 4th, in honor of the original 13 colonies. Okay. Yes. What's the 13 colonies? They say it there? Virginia. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, yeah. New York. Mm-hmm. Massachusetts. New Hampshire. New Hampshire. Where we at? Six? That's five. That's five. That's five. I'm going to get these joints. Is it? Uh, uh, I'm going to get these joints. Uh, New, uh, New Jersey. New Jersey, I think. Delaware, yeah, eight. It's Delaware. Delaware, uh, oh my God, Is Maine in there, Maine. Ah, Maine's in there. What are the original third? Oh, New England, New England, uh-huh. which is Massachusetts. The New England, yeah, yeah, yeah. New England yeah. is the area. The fuck, the fuck yeah, New England's a, is, original. Is a yeah, bring that original thirteen colonies are. Let's see, damn it. Okay, Rhode Island, okay. New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, Middle uh, all right, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia. That is a weak country. Yeah. That is if it only stayed there, nigga, they're true. We would be trash. But the New England We'd be Ecuador. 
We would be Ecuador, Guatemala if it stayed at the 13 colonies. Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Southern. Yeah. Because to, uh, to date, the only real strong country, I mean, cities, so I mean, states are shit. Cause nobody, really, I mean, Jersey is cool. New York, of course. At that time, Haiti would have beat us in a war. Hilarious, nigga. Haiti would have beat us in a war at that time. Shout out to the 13 colonies for being the Clippers and becoming the Lakers. Uh, do you know John Adams and Thomas Jefferson both died on July 4th, 1826? The same year? Do you, John Adams and Thomas Jefferson both died July 4th, 1826, the same day. Same Damn, year. nigga. Well, well, or are they together, nigga? They get shot and drive by? Yep. These, <laughs> that's hilarious. A musket by. A musket by. Somebody nigga. pulled up in a wagon, loaded their stuff, and they waited on and them alone. This nigga should have. <laughs> oh. One nigga slumped over, and nigga. <laughs> he will not shoot that bullet here, though. He will not dare kill two presidents at the same time. Yeah. He will not yeah, dare like do a, it. That sounds like a motherfucking uh, conspiracy, nigga. Yeah. Get these niggas on the same day at the same time. Yeah. Areas. Yeah, that's man. I, I never knew that fact. That's big. Nah, that's crazy, yeah. Uh, these two famous signers of the Declaration of Independence both died on his 50th anniversary. James Monroe, the fifth U.S. president, would later die on July 4th, 1831. What's the, uh, what's the fun? Uh, okay, wow. So so did James, uh, James Monroe. Damn. Calvin Coolidge. Calvin Coolidge. Is the only president that was born on the 4th of July. Uh-huh. On Independence Day, he was destined to be president. You think so? I'm saying that. Coolidge served as the governor of Massachusetts and the vice president before being elected president in 1923. Bam. Mm. Bam. God, shout out to Calvin Coolidge. Calvin, that's like a nigga name, bro. Americans spend $1 billion on fireworks every year for 4th Calvin, of July. Calvin. One billy. Damn. One billy. The Star Spangled Banner became the United States National Anthem in, anthem in 1931. I didn't know that. Nick said Nantham. And that National Nantham. <laughs> national Nantham. That's the day everybody black like, nah, instead of no. An and National Nantham. <laughs> Today we nah, motherfuckers. We not yeah, knowing yeah. them. Don't say no, say nah, you're going nah. to prison. Huh. Yeah, I didn't know that. I thought that was in you know here since the beginning. 1931 is not that long ago. Nah, it's not. What, what, what was niggas singing before that? Gangster's Paradise. <laughs> Been spending most of my life. That, that or <laughs> nigga, uh, Gangster Lean. <laughs> <laughs> to my homies in this Gangster Lean. Why'd you have to go so soon? That's just sad as fuck. Man, I can't listen Man, to it. That's tough, nigga. Yeah, yeah. Bristol, Rhode Island. Was home to the first Fourth of July parade in 1785. I know that it was boring. Yeah, they didn't have it right yet. You know what I mean? That shit probably was whack. Coney Island, New York, hosts a famous televised hot dog eating contest every year on the Fourth of July. Speaking of hot dog eating contests, a glizzy contest, a glizzy off. Damn, a glizzy, glizzy consumption <laughs> contest, nigga. Do you? You ever heard of uh, Joey Chestnut? <laughs> Joey Chestnut sound like a made up name, nigga. Joey Chestnut is the Michael Jordan of hot dog eating. <laughs> He's the Michael Jordan of the hot dog eating. I take that back. The Michael Jordan of glizzy consumption. In 2021, see every uh -huh. year they do this this competition on the 4th of July. 2021, he broke the world record. He ate 76 hot dogs and bun and the buns in 10 minutes. <laughs> he consumed 20,000 calories in less than 10 minutes. So I think he gained like fucking uh, seven pounds. Yeah, that's crazy. That's no, incredible. Six pounds in 10 minutes. Joey Chestnut is worth $2.5 million. Became a millionaire off of glizzy consumption. Man. That's crazy. Joey Chestnut. You said Joey Chestnut? Joey Chestnut. Joey Chestnut. Is a, that's a hell of a name, nigga. That is, I mean, he, he should be, a, he should train a horse. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yes. Dude. He should anybody that anybody that I, I mean I don't know, man. Uh, uh, um, a prostitution embellishment program. <laughs> <laughs> Joey Chestnut, uh, uh, ran and directed by Joey Chestnut. Joey Chestnut, shout out to Joey Chestnut. So you can increase your increase your bread by uh. See if you can if you can 
<laughs> consume. He said 70, how much? 76? 67. 70, uh, 76 hot dogs and buns in so 10 let's minutes. Break that down. So 76, and you teaching your whores to do their job better. They can't do 76 in, in 10 minutes because it takes more than just eating. You know what I'm saying? This is this take off 30, 30, 30 glizzies, nigga. <laughs> and now it's just 47. You can, you can, you can. You can Take care of 47 glizzies in 10 minutes. That's bread for you. Man. For the prostitute. Right. You know what I'm saying? She yeah. going to she going at uh the back of that uh Volkswagen and sha, 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 sha. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Done. Imagine yeah. not being hungry on game day. How do you force you could I, I imagine you gotta you be fast for three days before a glizzy contest? You got your stomach gotta be on E to take in 76 hot dogs. Damn, nigga. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. The hot dog eating contest was started by a fellow named Mott's or and Max Rosie. Um, they were invented in the early 70s when the 4th of July contest truly began. Nathan Handwerker, founder of Nathan's, uh, was irritated that contestants were paying for their hot dogs uh, and weren't eating them. So he, he started a contest in 1970. He was mad that they was paying for them but not eating them. Why? Because it, it, that's ego. As long as you're getting bread, nigga, it shouldn't matter. But he's like, nah, nigga, I want you to eat them first. Eat them as well. Pay me, but still I want you to pay yourself by eating my motherfucking hot dogs. Right. I don't know if I can hang, bro. How oh, many hot dogs do you think you can get uh, 10 minutes? Hey, my nigga be eating fast as fuck. Pause. Who? Uh, Ali. Ali, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he he, he actually be, he'll chew some of it with his hands, too. So it's, <laughs> it's already broken <laughs> down. So it's just shit, a pre-swallow. Yeah, he'll... he'll, he'll <laughs> <laughs> that nigga doing this shit. <laughs> putting some in, nigga putting some food in his elbow, his elbow yeah he got a glove with some teeth in it he just be you know yeah I don't know man I, I probably can get paws I probably Pause. can get five dogs out the way in, in 10, 10 minutes. minutes but they don't chew these motherfuckers they just nah, swallow them they can't just swallow look at the, the, you, you got like I think they chop them <laughs> you see I see be seeing the Asian niggas doing that shit they be like and pushing them and they push them so they don't. I think they chop them. Chew is. I feel like chew is when you use your mandibles too, your side teeth as well. Right, right. But when you when you chopping them, it's just the front teeth, nigga. Just chopping them as you pushing that motherfucker down. Paul. Right, right, right. Yeah, they're definitely not tasting them though. Yeah, that's why. Hey man, shout out to the hot dog eating legends, Joey uh, Chestnut. Just remember, a hundred years from now, you'll be known for putting a lot of meat in your mouth. Yeah. Be proud. And making millions of dollars doing it. God, God, God. In other news, man, one of my favorite young players might have lost a fan. Damn, man. Uh, Jalen Green, oh, man. Oh, man, not Brother Green. Jalen Green. I was touting this guy as the next Kobe. Yeah. I thought yeah. he had Hall of Fame talent, and he nah. still does. Yeah, I don't think it affects his game. It might, though, because the ridicule and the scrutiny he's going to receive is going to be incredible. Can we play this? So the fans can see it. Go ahead, play this. This is Jalen Green and his teammate uh, participating. So you got to say both the niggas. You got to say Jalen. Oh Green yeah, the, and, the, yeah. I and, mean, uh, what's his name? Christopher. Christopher. Uh, last name is Christopher. Yeah, uh, uh, Josh Christopher. At least Jalen's a top. Right. Because Christopher <laughs> got the got the worst of the situation. At least Jalen is a top. He I got pounded say. out. Pause. <laughs> wow. <laughs> nah, nigga. All right. Is that ever okay? Nah. No. If you, if your son, if there was footage of your son doing what we just seen Jalen Green do. Yeah. What is your approach to him as a father? I'm going to ask him. I'm going to sit him down and say, son, what's going on? Um, You like men? Here's the thing. What if Jalen, here's the thing. What if Jalen Green was like, all right, here's the thing. I'm a bag. I'm gay. Wow. Would that would the ridicule still be there? No, I would tell him, hey man, well, we we going to the WNBA. <laughs> You're gonna be the greatest WNBA. <laughs> That's hilarious, dude. No, I mean, if if my son said he was a bag, I would be very disappointed because I don't want that. But I right. wouldn't treat him different. Nah. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, if you're being honest as a person and you're not just pandering, you want your son to have an extraordinarily normal life. Right. 
avoiding unnecessary ridicule, right. unnecessary battle, right? Battles. It's an easy, top tier financial life with not a lot of trouble. So, right. if you're an NBA p- basketball player and you're openly gay, you're going to experience a level of scrutiny, right? That um, maybe you're not ready for. True, true. And here's the thing: I I, I wouldn't want that for my son. No, you know. Um, now let's, 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 let's break this down, bro. Do you think Jalen Green is homosexual? This is definitely homosexual activity. Right. I agree. I don't um, think there's such a such thing as bisexual men. Maybe I sound ignorant for that. Right. I don't know if he's actually have has sex, but this is grinding. Yeah. If nigga, Josh nigga. Christopher didn't want this, this is actually enough evidence to convict him of rape. Or a sexual assault. A sexual assault. Assault and pepper, <laughs> and seasoning and salt. <laughs> nigga, uh, nigga said, nigga salt. It's a sexual assault it, and it, pepper. It, it, it's sexual assault when when it's man on woman. It's sexual assault and pepper when it's man on man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, um, that's stupid, nigga. No, nah, but um, I, uh, I I think it's I think it's kids fucking around, playing around, and because of the because of the world today, that type of shit is goofy, funny. Now here's the thing. I wouldn't even say the world today because back in the day, that's what the white boys were doing. Right. White boys still do that to this day. And they a lot of times they be heterosexual, but that's funny to them. Right. Like sex playing their homeboys and shit like that. And even like the white boys are the ones that do like, uh, what's the shit called? They be, uh, they be uh, crotch hitting niggas in high school right. and shit. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I yeah, yeah, some yeah. doing like a. Penis pats. P- penis pats are, like, are doing some shit like, hey. Are whistling and hitting niggas in the balls yeah. and, and friends like, oh fucking Brett, you fucking asshole! Oh dude, you got my fucking balls, man. Well, let's not forget, white boys invented the moon, did they? Pulling their pants down and showing you they booty. <laughs> yeah, man. They yeah, play. White boys invented that. So you see so you know how you got the, uh, you know how you got the uh, the legendary Joey Chestnut, who is the pioneer and the record <laughs> and the record holder of of Glizzy eating. Right. Who's the Who's the white boy name? Who's the nigga that's the first nigga to move to show his ass yeah, to another uh, man? Man, this would be funny. Watch me show dude my ass. <laughs> Let's see what he does. Hey, hey, uh, hey, Cliff. <laughs> oh, fucking dude, you got me, hey, man. Hey, bro. I saw a hole, hey, bro. There goes the sun. Here goes the moon, dude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't participate. I think it's definitely buster behavior. Yeah. He can't take the game winning shot for my team no more. Damn. He's not a dog. Damn. He's hey, hot dogging niggas, he's but he's a not a dog. dog. Well, wouldn't, Chris, wouldn't that change your perception of Michael Jordan if there was footage of him doing that to Scottie I'm Pippen? Like, damn, Mike. I would say if Michael Jordan, if I seen footage of Michael Jordan doing that to Scottie, I would then with all my heart say Spud Webb is a better basketball player than Michael That's Jordan. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Now, all right, so let me ask you this, let me ask you about this. Anthony Davis. I seen it. That looked like some hazing, though, right? Yeah, but nigga, true. But that nigga was smiling and laughing and stuck his tongue out. Yeah, at the camera. Yeah, he was embarrassed. Here's the thing, bro. I've been, I've been, a, I've been a freshman in college playing ball in the locker room full of bigger and stronger niggas than me, for sure. Older, bigger, more aggressive niggas than me, and none of that shit went down. And we got hazed for sure. What's none the craziest hazing you you witnessed in in the? In the um, I nigga got tied to a goalpost. Not me, but. Um, I know a nigga that got tied to a goalpost and like had icy hot um wrapped. He got the head of his face and wrapped in icy hot. Why they do it? Would I do that to that brother? Yeah, Whatever. Because a lot of times some freshmen, some freshmen are uh don't know their role or are just not liked. I had a homeboy that had uh they um they put a a gang of weight gain uh Gatorade Gator shakes in his locker. So when he opened that shit, exploded on that nigga. Oh, oh, they couldn't stand him. Yeah, huh? but I mean, it's crazy because I, I'm not gonna say who, I, mean, I ain't gonna say who, who it was, but the homie uh, was a beast on the field. But he was too. He was young and cocky and nice. They ain't like that. Nah, nigga, you got to be humble. You, you get here, nigga. Okay, you, you might be better. He was better than the starter, and the starter was a senior. Oh wow! You know what I'm saying? And yeah. the starter was good. But he was just better. You know what I'm saying? He knew it. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't talk cocky like I'm better than everybody. But he just didn't. He didn't take on that freshman. I'm a freshman role, and I, I I'm a uh, take a. I'm a defer to every nigga older than me. Right. He was kind of like he was a silly nigga, a, a cracking jokes on older nigga. Didn't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Me personally, 
a lot of niggas didn't know I was a freshman when I got there. I was a big, I was a big ass freshman. Right, you know right. What I'm saying? And um, and so they come out Cal University, of Cal. Yeah, UC Berkeley, man. My my my, my his squad niggas. Uh, I was a big ass freshman, and um, they thought I was a JC transfer, so right. they didn't trip as much, and they realized I was a freshman. They had to be like the first, maybe like the first first month of the season. My nigga JP was like, "Hey, nigga, you a freshman?" I was like, "Yeah." Oh, nigga, I didn't know you nigga threw me his motherfucking bag and told me to go take it to the laundry, nigga. I almost didn't want to take it, nigga. Because I, I spent a whole two months with these niggas not getting fucked with. Hilarious. <laughs> they would, they would yeah. treat me like a real nigga. And then he changed that shit on me real fast. And nigga, hey, take my laundry, nigga. I said, ah. Who did it? Who did that? My nigga, Jeremiah Parker, man. Shout out huh. to my, the big homie, Jeremiah Parker, bro. Um, he ended up getting drafted by the Giants. Uh, but he was, he, he was a savage, though. He was. And, um. And uh, I was trying to save face. I was like, yeah, I'm going that way anyway. I'm taking my shit too. So right. I can take girls. He was like, nigga, it don't matter. Nigga, if you wasn't going that way, then you taking my shit. Now, here's the thing. You could not do it. You could not do it. But it's just going to be like, you, you're going to have to physically be bigger and stronger than this nigga every day on the, on the field, bro. Yeah. Because they're going to give you a hard time. They're going to beat your shit up. They're going to pause. They're going to fuck you up. Who's the most dominant freshman you've ever seen? On, on, just playing with on my team or just yeah, on your uh, team. general? On your team. I mean, um, I'm gonna say Adrian Peterson. Oh yeah, come on. But on your team, on my team, um, those dominant freshmen. Not even my year, because my year we had the best year. We was like, we was uh, my, my my freshman year. That class that came and went to Cal was was super strong. We had a gang of all Americans on there, all state niggas. Uh, um, my nigga uh, Igber, our running back, he was a freshman. We came in the same year, 2000, and he 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 started. Nigga. He started as a freshman. Kill. Yeah, it killed. Barry Sanders. I promise you. Closest thing to Barry Sanders. I got some old tape on the nigga. He never went to the league. He decided to stay in school and go get his degree and become an engineer. But uh he should have went to the league. He would have he would have went to the league easy for sure. And uh, he's the closest thing to Barry Sanders. Not sitting there's not sitting there and saying he would go run run run, run for ten, fifteen thousand yards in the league, but he was clean, he was super fast, five foot six, five seven. Right. Quick as fuck, bounce, jump over you. Uh, super quick stop and go. I'll show, I'll show you some tape of that nigga one day, both of y'all. And this nigga look like Barry Sanders. He wore number twenty nine. Shout out to Igbert. God, God, God. Yep. Siege monstrosities, 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 monstrosities. You hate criticism. You let a man cartwheel and punch you and said you wasn't living with him. They show out around you. Won't do a thing about it. Thugging and harmonizing. Watch them sing about it. You have a white mind. You think blacks are lazy and mixing Kool-Aid with they white wine. And that's the thing about it. Can't even talk to you. Ghost of a real nigga. Watch me walk through you. You fight your girl, man. Cuss out the mail, man. Go to jail and become a trail van. And that's the thing about it. God dropped you a breath man out the sky. Said, take this. And I think about you it. You a bitch ninja. You a bitch ninja. You know what you do. Probably fuck around and try to kick ninjas. You a bitch ninja. You a bitch ninja. You know what you do. Probably fuck around and try to kick ninjas. You a bitch ninja. You a bitch ninja. You know what you do. Probably fuck around and try to kick ninjas. You a bitch ninja. You a bitch ninja. You know what you do. Probably fuck around and try to kick I'm telling you, he's trained. And I know what you'll say. You run way back over there and say, shit's happening today. The money, the ops, the drop. But I ain't no dope dealer and I ain't running from no cops And why should I? I'm so hard to find A spy had to hire a private eye cause I'm a private guy Nobody knows where I live, not even my kids They have stains on their hearts, it's blood on the bib Your mother went against my wishes Aside from high, she was good for the dishes And to buy some fries Call me when you can dunk, cause I'm a punk Though I'm not a good father, I'ma need my chunk You a bitch ninja you a bitch ninja. You know what you do. Probably fuck around and try to kick ninjas. You a bitch ninja. You a bitch ninja. You know what you do. Probably fuck around and try to kick ninjas. You a bitch ninja. You a bitch ninja. You know what you do. Probably fuck around and try to kick ninjas. You a bitch ninja. You a bitch ninja. You know what you do. Probably fuck around and try to kick ninjas. You know what time it is. The Get It From God Stand Up and Roast Tour. Yo, if you can roast, come get yours. If you have talent, holler at me. All you have to do is go to my website, thecraigsmith.com, and check when we'll be in a city near you. If I owe you something, get it from God. God, God, God. The Chill Withers Trilogy. 
It started with Chill Withers, then went to the Chill Never Withers, and now it's at Chill Withers Cluster B. Chill Withers Cluster B dives into the intricacies of Cluster B personality disorders, histrionic, antisocial, borderline, and narcissism. Check out the album, God, God, God. And I also have a roast button, five one-minute roasts of some of the funniest, dirty jokes you ever heard in your life. And guess what? I'm going on tour starting in August. We'll be doing 10 cities. First stop, Texas. Tickets will be on sale soon. If I owe you something, get it from God. God, God, God. It seemed like he was trying to find good shit to say about me. Like, uh, and then she also, you think you don't even know. I'm not that smart. You know what I mean? I'm all right. But like I, he said, I'm from Eaglewood. Anybody from Eaglewood in here? Y'all was screaming like, okay, bet. Like, all right, if y'all not from Eaglewood, just know that I will rob you. I am dangerous, so just know that. And if you have never been and I put a blindfold on you and spent you in a circle and took it off, you'd be like, oh, shit, Mexico. Like, you took me on vacation. Like, literally every weekend I wake up to tamales, champurado, tam like, bitch, it's 8 a.m. on a Saturday. Like, let me get two chicken, three pork, like, <laughs> while you bullshitting. And one morning I went out there, and she probably thought I was, like, you know, trying to buy some tamales. But I was like, nah, bitch, like, you hiring? You know what I'm saying? Because, like, this bitch is making money out here, no taxes. You feel me? Like, and I'm struggling. Ain't no more PPP, EDD, NBC, none of that shit. You know, that shit is over. So I'm like, damn, I probably got to get a job. I was thinking, like, maybe I could be a stripper, you know? But I ain't really got the athletic ability. <laughs> it's like, really, oh, you got a nice body. Like, it's how the jiggly under here. You know what I'm saying? I ain't really got no muscles on, you know? So <laughs> so I can't do no splits, no pole work, like, none of that shit. I'm like, damn, like, maybe I could be a pregame stripper, you know? Like, <laughs> like before you get to the real bitches, nigga, it's me, nigga, what's up? Like, you know, like, <laughs> like, I could bounce on your dick for about 15 minutes, you know what I'm saying? Before I start breathing hella hard, just, uh. <laughs> I need some water. You know what I'm saying? I'll take quarters, too. Oh, God. I'll take quarters because, like, you can wash with that shit. Stop playing. And I know my worth. I know my worth. I'm a pregame. It is what it is. In real life, I'm a substitute teacher. <laughs> so, yeah, the contrast. I'm glad y'all was, was quiet on that. I hate when people clip. Like, what? It's not a fucking cool job. I thought it would be. I got this little kindergarten class one day. And I was like, oh, my God, these kids are so cute. Like, it's about to be a great day. You know what I'm saying? And they start talking. And I was like, oh, shit, like, y'all fucking idiots. You know, like, they asking me how to write the number six all day. Like, what? Like, right here, you know? And then they want to come up to you and be like, look, teacher, look what I did. And it's like, trash, bro. You know what I mean? Like, you're not Picasso on this motherfucker. Like, <laughs> and, of course, I can't say that. <laughs> I can't say that, right? But one student came up to me, and he just had brown crayon, like, scribble all over his shit. And I was like, bro, like. This is not it, you know? I'm like, this is what you should be doing. And that was the wrong move because this kid went, fuck you, bitch. Coloring is my life, ho. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> coloring is this nigga's life. I was like, damn, coloring is this nigga's life. You feel me? And I was <laughs> <laughs> like, damn. And I don't know if you know this, but, like, Hitler's teacher told him he couldn't do art. You feel me? I'm, like, just creating little Hitlers out here and shit. I'm, like, fuck, man. Like, don't tell your mom, you little bitch. Like, but at the same time, I was, like, nigga, like, if you crying over coloring right now, like, wait till you get to racism, bro. Like, you're not going to make it out here. <laughs> it's, like, Hunger Games. Like, get him in number 67. Bring him in. Like, no, too far? Okay. Like, it is what it is. Fuck these kids. Um, I was on the yard the other day, a.k.a. recess. You know what I'm saying? supervising, thinking about my next blunt, like, all right, 10 minutes, light that shit up. And this little kid come up to me, he was like, teacher, teacher, like, why do you have braces? And I was like, you know, just like, you know, just get my teeth straight or whatever. He was like, no, nah, um, I mean, like, at this age. I was like, what the, f like, nigga, why, why you being petty at seven, nigga? This the age I could afford him, like, <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, I hate it. I need therapy. I really do. And it's like, I got Medi-Cal, so, like, I really can't afford that shit because, like, oh, well, it's free, yeah, but you don't want the bottom of the barrel therapist, you feel me? Like, they used to working with crackheads and shit. They find out I got a degree. They're like, oh, bitch, you good. I'm like, yeah, but I hate myself. Like, I don't <laughs> <laughs> So I need, still need help. Like, <laughs> that shit ain't good, nigga. Like, what? It's crazy to offer. <laughs> 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 
that I'll be using shit. I'd be like, you know, like I'm trying to tell the therapist, like, all right, you know, I'm depressed. They was like, look, you can take this, right? Take this for about 30, 30 days and you know, and you can feel more depressed. I was like, what? <laughs> like, it's a risk. You could like, why would I take that, nigga? Like, it's already, I'm already looking at the razor blades. Like the Eiffel Tower is looking pretty scrumptious. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. It don't make sense to me. So my alternative is <laughs> Today. Some alternative is I do mushrooms, right? Yes. And obviously they help. And I always like to like spread this news and like share what I do. But if you're doing mushrooms and you masturbate, suck on your own titties, right? Just get in there. Just uh it's self-love. It's a game changer. And like you could you can do it too. Not just women, like you I, <laughs> and you as well. Um <laughs> it's the, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to. <laughs> if it's possible, if it's possible, try it. You don't, anything is. <laughs> and you might be, like, this happened to me before, right? You might be down there just like, all right, you suck your titty. You be like, damn, man, it's just me. Nigga. Like, it ain't nobody else looking at my titty. Like, I just need one more person, you know? Like, <laughs> just one more. Look, and I'm trying to date. I hate dating in LA. It's like super trash, like swamp water. You know what I mean? Like, ugh. And I like, I meet this guy. I'm like in the car, right? Like, he's selling weed. I'm like the trap bitch in the passenger seat with no gun. You know what I'm saying? Thugging. And I get hungry. I know he got money because he's been fucking selling weed all day. You feel me? So I'm like, he take me to get something to eat. We get to the hamburger stand. When I tell y'all, I'm just looking at the menu and shit. Like, I haven't said nothing. I swear to God, nothing. And he looked at me and he said, you could get three tacos. <laughs> Sir, <laughs> so you know who I am? Okay, really nobody yet, but soon to be. But y'all, look at these thighs. This is three taco minimum type of thighs I got right here. Like, I want to get that shit tatted. Like, three tacos each minimum, you stupid bitch. Like, <laughs> like you could have had some pussy, but you want to give me a three taco limit. Like... <laughs> It's not making sense. I got the best taco right here. You know what I mean? It's like lettuce, tomatoes, cheese, sour cream. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All the fixes, you know what I mean? No, nah, that's gross. Imagine mean, Joe's just like, uh, here it goes. I'm like, why do you have that in there? Like, why is it? <laughs> it's like I'm trying to do something different, you know? Like, so. <laughs> Yeast infection coming soon. Let's get this going. Um... It's horrible. Where was I? I? Went too far with the taco thing. Okay, so then I still keep trying, you guys. I still keep trying to date, and I meet this guy, and he seems like super cool. He like taking me to get meals, like no taco limit. You feel me? Taking me to work. I'm like, okay, marriage. <laughs> you feel me? Like, let's go. And then his phone rang one day, and it's a bitch in a wedding dress, and like he, and it's him in a tuxedo, and like they eating cake and shit. I'm like, wait, hold on, like, like who is that? You know? He was like, oh, you know, that's my girl, and I'm like. Nah, nigga, that's your wife. Like, what the, like, when was you going to tell me this? And he was all nonchalant, like, man, why would I tell you that? And I, was, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I thought to myself, I was like, wait, hold on, like, why would he tell me that? You know what I mean? Like, ruin what we got going on, you know? So I was like, I gave this nigga two more weeks on logic alone. Like, all right, this nigga's smart. You know what I'm saying? Like, he making sense. Okay, I gave him another month. But you know what? Like, it's be hard to let go. All right, I'm still fucking them. No, but it's just. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> These niggas are how you questioning yourself sometimes. Like, ladies, I don't know if y'all been through this before, but I always like to ask, like, how you know if your pussy good or not for real on some real shit, though? Because. And they get being your shit right, just like, oh yeah, this pussy fire. This is the best pussy I ever had. And it's like, cat, bro. You know what I mean? Like, cause well, I don't have a house yet. <laughs> like, it's not making sense. Like, the type of pussy they telling me I have and the type of lifestyle I'm living. <laughs> I'm like, wait, hold on. Like, I character seven, I did the division. It's not it's not adding up. Like, why do I still have a job? Like, where's where's my Birkin? Like, I don't get <laughs> I don't. I don't get it. I just, <laughs> it's like, it's bitches out here living with their nigga in the tent. You know what I mean? Like, do I got tent pussy? You know what I mean? Like, apartment pussy? Man, I just want to know. You feel me? Like, just just keep it a hundred. But at the same time, I don't want a nigga in my city just like, oh, this shit trash. Like, 
<laughs> garbage. You're like, nah, just tell me I can do better. I don't know. <laughs> you can do some you can do some kegels. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> it is what it is. But if you don't want to use up your pussy miles, right? Or you just I don't know, what the fuck ever. Women have so many crevices, you feel me? And all niggas need is an enclosed space and lubricant. And you can trick these niggas every time. And I'm giving y'all a secret right now, but it's really for you too. You know what I mean? Look, first one. <laughs> first one, thigh curvice meat. Right here. Juice that shit up. Just juice it up. Turn the lights off. He going to be in there like, oh, damn, this shit fire, babe. Whole time, he never entered you. You know what I mean? Whole time, you're getting crab leg meals, mimosas, whatever you want. Like, And that's not the only place. Right here, let the conditioner run down your neck. Damn. Armpit me. It's so many. Y'all looking at me crazy. It's so many places. You could have a headache. You know what I'm saying? You on your period. Your nigga autistic. I don't know, nigga. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know y'all life, nigga, but... I just one more. <laughs> it is what it is. But y'all been talking a lot about sex and y'all seem excited about it. So let's go. Who's having some good sex in here? Let's hear it. <laughs> I gotta tell you about this experience I had. I had the best sex ever, right? Like and when I tell you it was so far, like literally like I went to heaven, I saw my grandma, I came back down. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, on some real shit, that was the first time I met my grandma. Like, I didn't even know that bitch was white. I was like, oh, damn. We had tea and crumpets. It was lit. And I thought to myself, like, damn, like, I fucked this nigga and I met my grandma. Like, maybe if I fuck him again, I could finally meet my dad, you know? So I go over there, like, duh. And we're fucking, and I meet my dad. And I'm just like, hey, you know, why didn't you care about me or, like, pay child support or anything like that? And then the dude I'm having sex with is like, well, I take care of my kids. I'm like, not you, bro, my dad, and I or whatever. So, anyways, my name is Everett. <laughs> okay, so look, uh, God, God, God. God, God. So is there rules for your woman? When y'all settle down, can your woman go out more than you without you? I mean, she can go out more than me. Um, she can't go out a lot though. When I say can't, here's the thing: it's not about me saying can't. I, I want a woman that don't want to. Right. I want a woman that I don't have to keep in the house. Right. She want to stay in the house. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, not sitting, not because I don't want her to have fun and shit, but like, nah, have fun. And my girl can go out. My lady can go out if she wants to. Uh, with her homegirls, happy hour, a birthday party. You know what I'm saying? Just um, somebody coming in town. Let's go get a couple of drinks. Ain't nothing wrong with that for me. Um, Seattle for a week without you. One more time. Seattle for a week without you. Is she with her family? She's just going out there with her homegirls. For what? For what? what, what? <laughs> they just going out chilling. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's the thing, man. It, also, you got to know your woman, bro. I mean, <laughs> now, like I know my chick, so my wife is. I I, I trust her because she this. My wife boring, bro. I'm boring too, but my wife, I'm more. She way more boring than I am. Yeah. Like even before I wiped her up, she didn't go nowhere. She worked, spent time with her family, go visit her sister and play with her nieces and nephews and come home. Like that, that was her thing. You know what I'm saying? So even now, like we spend most of our time going to the movies and shit. Right. Like we don't she don't be hitting the club and she don't be hitting the lounges. She don't be doing that. I'm just if my if my wife came downstairs and was like, Hey, uh, um, where are you about to go? I'm about to go to the lounge, I'll be surprised. Right. So I, I don't know if I'm the right nigga to ask because my I don't go through that shit. I don't, also, I probably wouldn't wife a chick down that I had to, but nah, you can't go out this time. You going out more than me. What about revenge? Because some women turn everything a man does when he's busy into hanging with his friends. Yeah. Like, yeah. that irritates me. Are you yeah. out hanging with your friend? No, I'm working. It also, also depends on what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, if, here's the thing certain, position, certain things you do. What about this? I know niggas that went to school. And graduated from college and had two or three homeboys from college and said, hey, bro, we're going to put our bread together. We're going to save up about fifteen to 20000 each over right. the course of the next five years. And we're going to put our money into something and start a business. Right. Us three. You know what I'm saying? So now you started the business with your co your Now they're your co-workers and some of your best friends. You know what I'm saying? That's how I always do, nigga. Like right. me and Craig became friends 13 years ago. And we did, we did comedy together. We wrote and, and did sketches and 
You know what I'm saying? Did just comedy specials. We did a lot of shit together. And that's our that's our, our, our job. And they get to build. Right. You, me, and my nigga Ali. We homeboys, the same shit. They get like, so I work with my friends. But I, I built my life around that. I, right. I, I purposely want to build and make money and, and build a brand with my homeboys. You know what I'm saying? So my wife, of course, she'll be like, okay, you she know, oh, you hang with your homies a lot. Yeah, because these niggas are my coworkers. Right. These niggas I work with. That's how that's how I set my life up. How do you create that boundary? Because sometimes women, when they see us doing what we do, they feel like they should be able to integrate themselves into your world. I want to make beats now. I want to make sketches. I want to go where you go. And I don't think that's a problem. But how do you how do you separate the two? You got to talk. If you could talk to your woman and she listen, then that's different. Like, yeah, for example, my wife. I I mean, since we're talking about it, my my wife, all of a sudden, like to go to the boxing matches now. I'm a diehard boxing fan since I was fucking. 10, 11 years old. You know what I'm saying we used to watch Tuesday night fights on USA. Right. Every Tuesday night. Every Tuesday night we watching for unboxing. Oh yeah. On USA. You know what I'm saying? Since I was a little ass kid. So now I'm damn near in Vegas. Every every time there's a big fight, me and we, Kay, there. we all we all there, you know what I'm saying? Um and she be wanting to go. But one, her dad used to live in Vegas, rest in peace. So her being in Vegas is not a that's not that's normal. She she used to be in Vegas every like once or twice a month. But now she want to go to the fights because I'm. But she don't even like violence. I love violence. I love controlled violence. That's what boxing is. It's controlled violence. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. And so, but I had to tell. I mean, but then she also knows that I'm not gonna. We're not gonna go. You're not gonna go to every fight with me. You know what I'm saying? Fight a, a fight. I like to be around niggas that know the sport. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so we could talk about it. Right. We could talk about every round, nigga. Uh, who you think won that round? Yeah, he won that round, nigga. His jab was his jab was vicious on that round, nigga. He was more aggressive. You know what I'm saying? He did more damage. Well, my wife right there, she understands. She'll still enjoy the fight because I'm enjoying it. She want to be everywhere I'm at, where I'm at. Right. But we talk. She know, she know within reason. She's not going to overdo it. Right. Some chicks want to, like you said, integrate and like implement and just, just be there right. all the time. Anywhere you go, I want to go too. No, that's not. Uh, give me an opportunity to miss you. Is that an insecurity? For some, for some, for sure. For some, for sure, hell yeah, because they want to have their eye, they want to have their eyes on you at all times, right? And to me, that's a that's a that's the wrong type of relationship to be in. If you if you gotta be with him or you gotta be with her all, at all times because you think that she's gonna be doing some shit or or she's susceptible to all kind of bullshit or vice versa, that's whack. That's I whack. am, yeah. It's a million ways to do it. I don't know, ladies. If you got a man that's a go getter, you gotta understand that space is important. Mm-hmm. He said, let me miss you. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Let let your guy miss you. Trust him. Don't think that everything he do, you got to do. Right. If you don't trust him, you don't need to be with him. You got to have your own identity, man. And on top of that, nigga, think about it like this. If you, if you go on shit where your, your partner's going to be at, you can't bring your girl everywhere. Not not for the sake of you, but for the sake of these niggas. Because these right. niggas going to be, these niggas might not talk or behave the way they behave when there's a woman around. Right. And if it's six niggas and one nigga with his girl and she's sitting there in the middle of the conversation <laughs> laughing right. and everything, being entertained, and this nigga over here, these two, three niggas will really want to talk about some real shit that's happening in their lives, but they can't vent the way they want to vent because they got the homie's wife right here. And some you shit women ain't ready for. Right. You want to call and tell his girl. You want to tell somebody something. It ain't right. Mm-hmm. You know, you you know. Sometimes the the best thing for men is not empathy. The best thing sometimes is just somebody to listen to us get the shit off our chest. Because mm-hmm. we have violent thoughts as men. Oh yeah, hell oh, yeah. And women can't understand why we always constantly, you know, sizing each other up. Oh, fuck they, the- because they ain't never been beat up before. Right. You ever been beat up before, my nigga? <laughs> it ain't fun, nigga. It ain't fun. You yeah. you ever you ever been pulled off a gate? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You ever been Snatched chased out gate? of a neighborhood for no reason? Yeah, nigga. Yeah, you come out the store with a whole bowl, uh, a whole bag of chili cheese Doritos, nigga, and your little soda, nigga, and got to drop that shit and hit the gate because these niggas after you. After you. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, if niggas grow up with a with a, with a uh, fucking anxiety. It's, it's a violent world where we come from. You know what I'm saying? Girls sitting there with no fights, no beat ups, uh, stories, nothing like that. Everyone, why you always got to think like that? Why you always. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Nah, because. It's a doggy dog yeah, world yeah. out here. Um. So look, you with your woman, you taking care of her. Mm-hmm. She on your medical insurance, right? All her allowance money you giving to her, giving it to her. You paying for a car. You the head of the household, right? You the man. Mm-hmm. She like she a woman that like to go out. 
Mm-hmm. All right. Say you pay for something medical like new teeth. Right. Now she want to put her teeth in to go out and show out the teeth. Well, let's just just bring up the video. Uh, shit. Let's see the video and then I will talk about it after the video. Uh, uh, go ahead, bring that up, Zay. Come to the lounge. Not tonight, man. You should stay here tonight. Stay here for what? Stay here with me. Your ass always going. Somewhere. Yeah, you always going somewhere. We didn't have time. I went somewhere. Just went somewhere the other day. I went somewhere with your ass. That was that Super Bowl shit. That was yeah. your shit. Well, hey, that should be enough. I tell you what, you want to go? You gonna leave them teeth here with me? Leave what? Them teeth gonna stay here with me. You sound like a motherfucker. You ain't be grinning no nigga face and not with no teeth I paid for. So you want to go and give me no teeth or, or go back in the room? You you sound stupid as fuck. Give me the teeth if you're going. Okay, huh? Here you go. I don't want them motherfuckers here. Put them in that boat. You saying give you my teeth like niggas don't holler at bitches with no teeth? Well, that's all right. You can whistle me like that. Well, what you say about that shit, there? Then I'll be smiling in the face all night. You be whistling like right. Where you going? I think it's that he sent her out compromised. Hey, <laughs> if you're paying for the car, the housing, the food, and your woman says, I'm going to go out, and you say, no, nah, I don't want you to go out tonight. Just stay in the house today, baby. Is it wrong if she says, no, I'm going out, or should she do what you say if you're paying the way? Oh, that's tough, my nigga. You want me to fuck around with the answer, or you want me to Nigga, I want you to get to the, to the shit. <sighs> stay home, bitch. <laughs> if I'm paying for everything, uh-huh. you I, pay, if I don't want you going, you can't go. Huh? Yeah. You're my you're not my child because you know what I mean, but you're damn close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're under me. Uh-huh. I'm over you, which means I can No, I'm joking. Uh, but uh, I say <laughs> what I want to say and you got to obey. <laughs> I don't know, is it wrong? I mean, here's the thing, man. It, it, it's not it's not wrong, but I feel like you probably shouldn't be in that situation because then she's going to resent you. Right. You know what I'm saying? At that point, think of it like, like you said, she's not your child, but right. she's damn near close. Here's the thing. What do parents, what do kids do when they feel like their parents are overbearing? They rebel. And, and because I said so, rebelling for kids is like going outside, sneaking and smoking weed and shit on the side, right. getting a beer with the homies when they're underage, um, sneaking the girl into the house, sneaking the boy into the house. That's how they rebel. Your wife rebelling is it's, it's, it's gonna be deeper consequences. Yeah, it's gonna be another uh, man. Yeah, that's a hell. That's a hell of a rebel. Right. So if it, it, she, if you don't want her to resent you, here's the thing. If this is Thursday night. Now here's the thing. It's Friday, right? And she said it's it's the weekend, baby. I'm done with work. I'm gonna right. go out with my ladies and have some some fun. I said, well, wife, you went out for Sunday brunch. Right. You went out for Taco Tuesday, and now it's three days later. Nigga, you just want to go out again? You you've been out. Twice this week. This is the third time. Right. You know what I'm saying? How the fuck I got to, you going to come home drunk, tipsy for the third night in a row? The right. third night of the week? Right. Nah. Stay home. Stay home. You're not wrong in that case. But right. if she ain't been nowhere in a minute and she want to go out, now if y'all had plans and she want to change it because she want to go out, then nah. We going to stick to the plans, baby. Right. But uh, but if she want to go out with her homegirl to a lounge, <laughs> don't take your teeth, my nigga. Don't, don't, don't take her to yeah, 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 yeah. He he have to live in, he, he leaving <laughs> he having to go outside without my nigga. That's you know what I'm But here's the thing: some some men will frame it different. Some will use deception to get her to stay. Mm-hmm. So how come just a no? I don't want you to go ain't good enough. Why do it got to be extra sometimes? Why do it got to be you know? I don't go out because you know I'm sick and I need somebody to take care of me. Or why mm-hmm. don't go out because you know down there is trouble down there. You know, last night somebody got shot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or you know. You know what I mean? Like, how come no isn't good enough? Why does there have to be an explanation? If you have to explain thoroughly every no, does your woman really trust you? Nah. If you got to explain why you you feel a certain type of way for her to respect it, then nah. Right. It's not about trust. I think it's respect. Right. She might trust you to be whatever. She might not respect you enough. I know I know women for sure that are married to men they do not respect. I promise you. Right. And that's not the man problem. That's a woman problem. Yeah. Women are, they pick and choose who they respect based on what's being done for them. That's the difference between men and women across the board. Men, we understand the dangers of other things. So we respect it off top because it you have to. Mm-hmm. Because being disrespectful as a man could end up in death. Right. Women are allowed to pout and talk smart and do crazy Throw things. drinks and, and shit like that. We can't do that. 
I ain't never, I ain't never seen a club. I, I ain't never seen in a club where a chick takes a drink and throw it in another bitch face, and they pull each other's hair for seventeen seconds, and the security break it up, and then one of them girls get shot outside. Never, that, that don't happen. I've seen niggas get pushed in the club, and then there's a shooting outside, and those two niggas are involved. Right. So it's a different. A woman can act her full ass. And all no she got to do is she might have a couple scratches, her track is pulled out, and she go to the, she go to the the nail shop tomorrow, get her f- hands fixed, and get her hair did. Right. The next day and be cool. And next time I see that bitch, I'm gonna do something to her. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say I'm gonna tell her I'm gonna give her a piece of my mind. Niggas, you push a nigga in the club, that might be the end of your life. That might you might not make it to the morning. You might not. But then you got Jalen Green type dudes out here. Oh man. And Josh Christopher type guys out here uh, dry humping, nigga. That's a murderable <laughs> offense. If Josh Christopher would have murdered him, every man in this country that's a real man would have been like, yeah, he deserved hey, it. Hey, bro, if you just, like, listen, you, you did some shit like that to a nigga and his homeboy was filming it. Like, two homeboys, like, about to play a trick on another nigga. I hey, film this shit real quick and grab this nigga while he on, the, on, or he on the bench or the bed and dry hump him. And he see you humiliating this nigga while the homie filming it. Oh, he might my. do something to that nigga. Oh, yeah. You know what the I'm saying? homie filming it got to go, too. Yeah, hell yeah. You gotta go, bro. You might be complicit. That's a getaway driver. Yeah. Same shit. Yeah. yeah. That's the new name for a buster. You a Jalen. What's the, you, 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 nigga, you, a, you a Jay Green. You man. a Green, bro. <laughs> you a Jay Green. You Green. You, <laughs> you Jay Green ass oh, thing. Is, is the bitch Jay Green or Christopher? Josh Christopher. Who's the bitch? Oh, you, you a Jay Chris. You're, just, you're, you're, you're Christopher, man. Instead of a buster, you're, you're Christopher. So if you tell your woman she can't go and she goes, she's Jalen Green and you're Josh Christopher. She's fucking you. <laughs> and you're screaming. That's for target. Yeah. But look, fellas, just because a woman doesn't have respect for you doesn't mean she's right. Right. See, a lot of times men's ego get caught up in it and a woman get to being disrespectful and they take that as a personal issue. That's not your that's not your thing. A disrespectful woman will burn in the hellfires of loneliness, <laughs> especially uh, if she thinks there there are uh, 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 destinations you have to reach before respect is given. Because, look, when the dick is new to a woman, they give you the ultimate respect. Because they're really they're really scumbags and uh, bowers to the sword, but once they've been daggered enough, and, they, and, and, the, and the dagger's been immune to them, and they're immune to the daggering, that's when some ladies start get to, start to getting disrespectful, and that's where that thing that you said earlier comes into play. Make them miss you. Make them miss you. Because if you give anybody too much, at some point they're going to lose respect for it because they're going to think it's too easy Take subconsciously. It Take it for granted. The 48 Laws of Power says that uh, uh, one of the ultimate ways to will respect is through disappearing. Mm -hmm. To increase value, you must decrease your presence. Yeah. Which is why I'm not going to be doing as many podcasts as I was doing before. You can't be as accessible. You can't be as accessible. Y'all made this normal, man. This ain't normal. This Mm -hmm. comedy and perception we give you ain't (laughs) It ain't normal like that called. That's why niggas like <laughs> Daniel Day Lewis, he'll do a movie every five years. Right. He'll do he'll do dances with wolves and disappear for years and come out and do some other shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um. Just, and so you see a Daniel Day Lewis movie coming out, you got to go see it because you ain't seen that nigga in a couple of years. I don't even know what he looked like. What right. Do, what did Daniel Day Lewis look you seen, like? Uh, he, you seen um, Gangs of New York with Leonardo DiCaprio? Right. He built a, built a butcher. That's Daniel Day Lewis. Okay, yeah. And also Dancing with Wolves. He's in. He's the Indian. He's the black. He's a white man that was basically running with the Indians, the Native Americans. Okay, let his hair grow out. He was an American soldier that ended up kind of like adopting the culture of the Native American. Okay. Uh, no, nah, he, he's a mom. He, he's great movies. He's uh, up there with. Uh, he's the Denzel of his of his era. You know okay, I mean? of like directors. Uh, no, actors. Actors, okay. Yeah, yeah, he's dope. Uh, shit, there will be blood. Yeah. I drink your milkshake. That's yeah. Right. Daniel Day Lewis. I think I know his face. You, you definitely know his face, but watch his films, nigga. He don't do no bullshit films, bro. He'll do a film, and it's usually a, a monster. That's why he's doing it. Yeah, wow. What's his last film? Uh, shit. I, I don't know. Let me look. That's a good question. He hit me with a question. I don't know just yet. 
Let me see. Daniel Day Lewis. Oh yeah. Huh? So he be chilling. He get the bag and chill for a couple years. Yeah. Yep. That's a great way to live, Making huh? Was his last film, nigga. 2012, bro. And he got some shit coming up. Oh no, as an actor. He got some shit coming up. Phantom Thread? No, that came out 2018. Oh, he played Lincoln, huh? Yeah, he played, that's what I'm saying. He he going to come out and do a monumental film and then dip. Like you said, you know what I'm saying? What you said, what was that? What was that quote you just said about, uh, um, you said about disappearing? Oh, disappearing to create, uh, to increase value, you got to disappear. You right. have to disappear. He did, a, he did, a, there will be blood in 2007. Then two years later, he does 2000, in 2009, he does nine. And then three years later, he does Lincoln. And then he don't do shit for five years. He come out and do Phantom Thread. And then a year later, he does, no, I'm sorry, Phantom Thread. That's the last movie he did, 2017. Oh, wow. And he'll probably come out in 2024 and do something crazy, like play like fucking another another monumental figure in the world. Okay. He's that dude, bro. Right? Yeah. 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 You know, but the thing is, producers always dropped. Artists. But I, yeah, I think when artists and producers start becoming the same dude, it increased the frequency. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because Kanye West would have been two people in the 1970s. Very, very true. You know what I'm saying? Very true. But you know, he's you know, look, the yeah. dream too. Yeah, J. Dream Cole make beats. All days. these dudes make beats. <laughs> right, 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 mm-hmm. right. Because you gotta let your film, you got you gotta let your body of work breathe yeah. for another. Another 12 to 13, 14 months before you start working on something else. But I think we're attributing that to that, that to genius when it was really something that we should attribute to technology. Mm. Technology moves slower. It was, harder to, it was harder to make an a album back then. Right. It cost a lot of money and, 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 and it, uh, required more physical hands. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, there was no uh, s- sketch world. With no sketch world. Could you imagine if, if that's how Bill Cosby started off doing sketches in the late fifties? And we had a bunch of these home video reels of Cosby and yeah. uh uh Ella Fitzgerald doing uh, the lesbian homie. And hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious! You, I can't even imagine nah. behind the scenes shit of uh, Billy Holiday and Josephine Baker. Josephine Baker. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's crazy. Could you imagine seeing just Jackie Robinson smoking weed at the Robinson House compound, just all on uh, BTS, uh, all, all on well, nigga ground? Camera wasn't no BTS. Nigga. That, that <laughs> shit cost money. All that was film. Hey, all yeah. that was real film. That shit cost bread. Do you remember wondering what happened on the other side of the TV after the show was over? I as did, a kid, until like until I, I went, went until I went. I went. I used to start going to the Fox tapings. That's how. That's how I got the acting bug. I started going, I watched Martin, Living Single, Parenthood, and I saw they would cut and they would break and window, uh, window. And you saw Martin like, live? Yeah, nigga. I seen Living Color. I never seen Martin live. How was Martin show. live? It was funny as fuck. What episode? You Shit. You know what? I, I didn't stay in the whole, I, I, I didn't stay for the whole thing, but I think it was, was it the, uh, it was the Halloween one? The first one, he bought that house and it was like, oh man, uh, it was either the Halloween one or the one where the niggas were possessed. Right. Old man Ackerman or some shit, and then nigga Tanya was doing Rrr. that shit. Remember that shit? Yep, yep, yep. When yeah. it was fucked up, I think that was the episode. But okay. I just say for the whole thing, we, we snuck into it. Okay. Yeah. Because everybody, because what happened is he had a lot of extras that was waiting to get into the Martin, uh, the Martin show. It was like a long ass line. We cut line. We was young high school niggas. Right. We snuck into that shit. Um. So and then we got caught. We had to leave and all that. But so I seen I seen Parenthood. I see a live taping of uh a live taping of um Parenthood. Live a single. Um, Reagan, that's a woman that dedicated her life to her family. Who? Reagan, Reagan Gomez. Gomez. Yeah. When we were, do you know who that is? My cousin popped at her, nigga. I told you about that shit, right? She, I didn't have balls, nigga. I, I froze. The homie locally wiped her. I mean, he's from the Dina area. I don't know him personally from the quote. That's his wife. Yeah. They got kids. They've been together since back then. That's dope. Yeah. That's crazy. That's that's we, that's that's Parenthood was on in 97. Yeah. That's a long ass time. Reagan said she could have been 
Nah, she could have been something because she was doing her thing, man. Her, Mike Campbell, uh, that was that was that era. Yeah, where uh, a lot of those, um, what happened to uh, um, Tatiana Ali? She's still around. She dates white men. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a that's a random fact, nigga. She is one of the most naturally beautiful women on the Have planet, you sister, and nigga? has no interest in me as an African. She'll be your friend because she's a good person. Yeah, but yeah. You have no chance, bruh. Her sister. Brothers. I think her sister's name is M. Anastasia. She bad, sister. too. Boy. I, I don't remember. Tatiana Lee has a sister? Yes. Yes. Really? I think I can't remember. If she's, I think she's younger, but not, but not that much younger. She is she around our age. She's around our age. I met her at a, a project. I got cast to do, to do like a, a web series, a, a episode in the web series years ago before I was even shooting for myself. Right. I, I, was, I was acting and I, I got casted for this role called Frat Swap. And uh, shout out to them, man. That was a pretty funny sketch. And she was a producer on that project. Her the sister. Anastasia. Yeah. I'd like to see her. Yeah, I'm going to show you. Face. I don't know what they mix with, bro, but they got that clear hug. She should have played Rudy on the Cosby show. Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, around the same age too, because Rudy around our age. Yeah. You found a picture of her, yeah, Anastasia. Sure. Let me see Anastasia. Wow. Comment below if y'all know who Anastasia is. Boom. Oh my Come god, on, nigga, <laughs> that's the same picture, nigga. Yeah, and she cool as fuck, just like her sister. She was super cool, Anastasia. Tatiana Cole. Dude. I didn't even know she had a sister, and I was introduced to her. And uh, I think we I think we shot the last scene at her house, Anastasia's house, like in her backyard. Had this big ass backyard look like a field. Shot that shit like in the woods. Anastasia and she was cold yeah. piece Tall of work. Too. Tall too. Is yeah. she? Yeah. Yeah. Shout, shout out, out to, to the Ali girls, the Ali sisters, man, beautiful women, incredible women. If I'm wrong about Tatiana dating white men, somebody please correct me. I, that's what I heard. That's what I saw. Um, I might be wrong. Well, maybe. When we get back, more uh, more callback show. God, God, God. You know what time it is. The Get It From God Stand Up and Roast Tour. Yo, if you can roast, come get yours. If you have talent, holler at me. All you have to do is go to my website, thecraigsmith.com, and check when we'll be in a city near you. If I owe you something, get it from God. God, God, God. Set a pacemaker, changed my heart, did everything in tools, then built my arc. Cause I've been old, childish alchemist, cause I've been gold. A lot of rebounding like Robin on the sparks, and I've been told. Great men do it, cause they've been through it, but they're right, been bold. I judge ya. On what happens when I'm done Will she raise soldier when he raise gun Or will he get exposure and D-Wade's son We fought it out, bad tenant, her dad did it Gave notice and got it out Now I walk in belief and travel without a doubt I'm tougher than I used to be though I fight less Less about right, more righteousness A might with the might to light distress Cause I'm different We going up, up I'm with Cube on this, what's in it for us? Walk Rosa off the bus and park it in a plus Rolls Royce, ask my nigga voice, it's better when we up Cause black is not Irish, can't depend on luck we have no friends, cause friends don't fuck each other out of ends And end up stuck, trying to fit in when the end is us Looking for a win when the wind blew dust Wanna know how they feel? Recorded Clippers owner Can racism heal? Just ask my nigga donor More power to the loners Banks won't do it, so loan yourself time when you go through it to the other side, the covers off my brother's eyes, a plaintiff in the suicide, we settle for this you and I doing our thing, if the mouth don't open then the voice can't sing. We going up, 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 until we up, 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 now look at us, 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 we going up, 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 going up, 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 up until we up, 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 up.
Yeah. yeah. Shout out to them out there, Nation. I know you out there, man. A lot of shit going on now. A lot of shit. Sean Kemp is doing drive-by shootings. He ain't even a shooting guard. Who told Sean Kemp he could shoot? <laughs> the fuck is going on? Motherfucker out there. Out the window with that shit. Remember when Sean Kemp thought he had a J? That shit was ugly. Go back to Duncan. <laughs> Let me quit for this motherfucker come do a drive by Damn. Took it old school. Them motherfucking 90s basketball players don't let the new niggas have shit. John Moran, oh, you got you flossing a gun. I'm going to do a drive by. <laughs> Damn. John Moran in the club with the shit just playing around. And Sean Kemp is doing actual drive, carrying out vendettas. Lafonso Ellis was in trouble. Sean Kemp came through. <laughs> oh, man. Watching one of my favorite shows out there, man. Catfish. Oh, I like Catfish. Catfish is cool, man. The thing I like about Catfish is that these motherfuckers have these relationships. They drive all the way out 60 miles. They knock on the door. And it's like, you're not Jessica. And get in the car, and they complaining and shit, and talking to the host. Boy, 90s? If I drive out there, I'm fucking. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Nope, you shouldn't have been playing around on this internet. <laughs> now you about to get fucked. <laughs> knocking on the door of my dick. <laughs> Are you home? Them missions, man, them 90s missions, you just... She had a boyfriend for the day. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to the movies, holding hands, all that shit. I'm finna just get back in the car because you ain't who you said you was. <laughs> <laughs> I know you thought it was going to be a confrontation, but I'm here to fuck. <laughs> you can unball your fists. <laughs> that shit is crazy. That shit and uh, Naked and Afraid. Now, naked and afraid, that shit is crazy. Butt naked and afraid. <laughs> Out in the motherfucking wilderness, butt naked and afraid. But I'm just not mature enough to be up in there just naked with somebody and afraid. That shit would be called naked and pregnant. <laughs> we got to get him out of here. He's impregnating all the contestants. <laughs> but I get scared. That's what I like to do. <laughs> I'm nervous. <laughs> I've been eating uh was it the Godoji berries all night. <laughs> that shit is crazy. The motherfuckers be out there naked searching for fish. Catfish and shit is old. Let me tell you this. I was on a reality show. Yeah? What? Yeah. I was on a reality show. It was a misunderstanding. I, you know, it was called a contender. And um, got up on that motherfucker. I'm, you know, dressed for a nice date. You know, they got the flavor of love and shit like that going on. You know what I'm saying? I got my suit on. Your polka dot jacket like a motherfucker, right? I'm out there, right? Out there in the nation. Yeah, you know how I be trying to do it. The contender. Man, that was some boxing shit. I didn't know the contender was boxing. They didn't name that shit right. The contender is a boxing reality show. I'm sitting up in there with a polka dot jacket on. <laughs> out there nation like a motherfucker and these niggas is ready to box <laughs> we gonna do the prelims and we gonna do the train I'm, we not doing none of that <laughs> give me my sad card back I, mean, I will not be in this <laughs> y'all talk about hitting in the face oh hell no mm -mm. like that if there's a way you can just box with just hitting hitting people and they don't get to hit you back I'll do that kind of boxing but combat sports shit um, MMA, that Brazilian jiu-jitsu shit, that, man, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, fuck that. Because that, thing about that, anybody that does the MMA shit, you know, you can do everything right and still fuck around and get choked out. You can do everything right. <laughs> Any other situation, you won the fight, you on top of the motherfucker, right? You about to just rain down on this motherfucker. They'll catch your shit, twist your shit, bend your shit, and then you gotta, then you gotta tap out, and the referee be trying to come in all aggressive to break the shit up. Like nigga, you knew how he was getting ready to do me. You should have been over here. 
diving in from all far away. <laughs> you need to be closer. This motherfucker is trained. <laughs> I'll leave y'all with this, man. Hit y'all with some of this headaches. This is off the, the album. I'm out there. Oh. Oh, yeah, we about to run this. Y'all can hear it on camera. Oh. Oh, my. Oh. Oh, my bad. I thought it was going to start right there. Man, I was a little early. I was a little early. (laughs) Fellas. Hit it. Yeah. Paco Swartz on the beat. Uh That boy musical. Things that give you, give you headaches Maybe you're thinking too hard Maybe not thinking enough Cause when I'm doing me, I feel okay I feel okay And when I'm doing you, it's headaches The headaches don't stop Headaches don't stop Cause when I'm doing me, I feel okay uh, I feel okay And when I'm doing you It's headaches The headaches don't stop Headaches don't stop when I'm doing me I feel okay Now all of a sudden You out there Trying to help your kids Do they homework You couldn't even get past fractions <laughs> And that was in the third grade Now you up in the house With an eighth grader Trying to teach them some Arithmetic Career D student Out here talking about We about to go over the lesson plan I'll tell you what you do though I'll tell you what you do The next time The next time your kids ask you for help with their homework And you don't know the answer Just get mad at them Yeah, nah You need help with this homework Cause you ain't been paying attention in class Give me this shit I'm throwing it away Cause when I'm doing me I feel okay I feel okay, but when I'm doing you, it's headaches. The headaches don't stop. The headaches don't stop. When I'm doing me, I feel okay. Yeah, yeah. I feel okay, but when I'm doing you, it's headaches. Oh. Cause when I'm doing me, I feel okay. Some, Some of y'all was out locked there. Down. Y'all was locked down. Somebody was planning you was on planning leaving on in two weeks, in two weeks when the pandemic, pandemic first, first hit. hit. That's it. You didn't. You didn't have a you heads up. You, you didn't have no head little heads up. You didn't have no notice. notice. You could have made the arrangement to get, get up, up out of there, there. there. Or, or you, you get, get up out of there. there. But no, you, you was lollygagging. I know. I know some dudes out there gonna try to use. Some dudes this. gonna try to use this. You gonna, you gonna kick you me gonna out? Put me out? You, you gonna, gonna put me out in the middle of a pandemic? You trying to kill me? Some dudes say anything to stay up in that house. No sit in the store and get coughed on Cause this, that ain't right It ain't right Ooh, I know y'all got some headaches out there Cause when I'm doing me, I feel okay I feel okay And when I'm doing you, it's headaches The headaches don't stop The headaches don't stop When I'm doing me, I feel okay Oh man, oh man, oh you'll be okay And when I'm doing you, it's headaches The headaches don't stop the headaches don't stop When I'm doing me, I feel okay Oh, man But you'll be okay When I'm doing man, you Man, you got headaches. all of this stuff going on right now Giving everybody a headache Take the when shot, don't me, take the I shot feel okay. Let somebody cough in your bed What is going on? And when everybody I'm doing you, out here headaches, headaches. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. No, One more came on. It ain't my fault. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, yeah. No, I ain't got insurance. Huh? Yeah, I ain't got insurance. What about State Farm? Don't care. What about Aflac? Don't care. What about the General? I don't care, man. I ain't got insurance. What about Progressive? Don't care. What about Allstate? Don't care. Triple A. They're right there, man. I ain't got insurance when I'm riding down the street. 
Everybody should be worried when I'm on the avenue. I ain't got insurance bouncing from block to block like Saquon Barkley on the Giants. Police want to speak to me, hope they don't want to speak to me in private. Now the best of my battle, this is like a hair trigger. I know this here ain't fair, but you're going to have to bear with us. I done rode with the doors open, I done drove down the street sleep. I done pulled up the boulevard, I just hope I don't hear that. They go to police right there. I don't see them. They're right there. It's okay if you turn right, but just don't turn right, right here. All I know is don't do it. There they go. See, I knew it. About to get me some tomorrow, but today I'm Tony Stewart. On my way to Nova City, folks. Some of that kind of five life. I ain't crazy. I ain't stupid. I be out there. I be trying to drive right. I'm just sorry I don't have. My memory's a little blurry. Over in the glove compartment. Yeah. I ain't got insurance. Look me in my face. Uh, I ain't got insurance. I ain't got insurance. I ain't got insurance. When I'm riding down the street, I ain't got insurance. I ain't got insurance. Why well, ain't got insurance? What about State Farm? Don't care. What about Affleck? What about the general? I don't care. I ain't got insurance. What about progressive? I don't care. What about all states? I don't care. What about triple A? I don't care, man. I ain't got insurance. Yeah, man. Shout out to the I'm Out There Nation. I know you out there. <laughs> and that's how you be out there. This is what the festival's about. You know what I'm saying? Getting out there. Uh. My real niggas make some noise up in this motherfucker. You know what I'm talking about? I love being able to get out here and perform and bond with my people. You know what I'm saying? All four of y'all right here. <laughs> It's, it's, make, it's, it's easy. It's making like one-on-one -on -one service. You know what I'm saying? Like real therapy. Like I probably could really help you with some of your problems. Just because I can, you know, give you that attention you really need. You know, everybody know ladies really need the attention, man. Attention is a big thing for y'all, man, you know. And I just like to see y'all get it, you know. A lot of times, man, I look at all these beautiful ladies nowadays and see how, you know, they go through all kinds of stuff to achieve these levels of success. You know what I'm saying? And I see why, man, because, you know, these ladies, they be beautiful as a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, that window of beauty is only so long for most of you motherfuckers. <laughs> you better jump through that motherfucker because that window getting short. And then sometimes, ladies, you know, sometimes, ladies, I think you got to start giving regular niggas a chance when you know you at the height of your finest, you know what I'm saying? You got to give a regular nigga your chance. Y'all be trying to go for the best of the best when when you at the height of your finest, but you know, like seven, nine years after high school when that slut gut set in, <laughs> you'd have been through it with like two dope dealers and went to prison on you already. Now you want to come back and fuck with the corny nigga that liked you in 10th grade, you know what I'm saying? Nah, he wanted some of that pussy when it was, you know, when it was flourishing. He don't want none of that shit while it's flambeing. You know what I'm saying? And it's always worked like that because the girls, y'all y'all mature faster than women. So, you know, I mean, y'all mature faster than men. So, you know, y'all go through y'all grace and y'all find this real quick. And niggas be ugly ducklings for a long time. You know what I mean? And by the time a man come into himself... About three or four niggas and came into you. <laughs> now you want to give a nigga a chance. You called that nigga corny in high school and didn't didn't want nothing to do with the corny nigga. Now look at you in 2023, you elote loving bitch. <laughs> bitch fucking that elote up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Michael B. Jordan, you're the best. They got that little, uh, you see that little internet shit going on right now? Gilly the Kid that started, ask your girl who this, you tell your girl that uh, Michael B. Jordan is the sexiest nigga in the world and see how she responds. If she, if she says, if she agrees or gives anybody other than you, she failed. <laughs> I got three failure-ass baby mamas. All them bitches fail. <laughs> shit. One of my baby mamas like a stud. Bitch, fuck you. That's right. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I said, who the finest nigga in the world was? She sent me a picture of a bitch that looked like Man Manny Fresh. <laughs> 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 I 
I wasn't loving that at all. I basically got to start respecting the nigga, man. That's what's wrong. <laughs> niggas, we doing, you know, I ain't going to say we, man. But these young niggas is doing shit very unbecoming of a man of respect, ladies. And as a real man, I'm going to apologize for that. You know what I'm talking about? Eventually, we're going to catch up with these wayward-ass boys and, and, and take that shit back and give y'all back y'all purses and skinny jeans and shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm tired of these niggas, these little bags, man. What you niggas got in these bags, man, that's so important you can't put it in your pocket? <laughs> I just want to fucking know. You know what I mean? I'm tired of these fucking bags and purses. Ladies, you got to know, man, I'm here to help you. Cause I really swear to God, I'm 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 kind of worried for the for the community now because I swear to God, it feel like these young niggas don't even like pussy no more. You know what I'm saying? Y'all y'all ladies walk in rooms, y'all don't even get the kind of looks you used to get back in the '90s and shit. Niggas was on you like hawks and shit. What's happening, baby? You see that? You see that foot drag? That nigga sliding in the home. You like what's happening? That nigga sliding in the home for some of that pussy. Nowadays, these little niggas see y'all come in the motherfucking room, and they'll turn around like, yeah, man, what's up, dead homies, nigga, dead homies. <laughs> Tired of that shit. I knew the world was coming to an end in that regard when Forever 21 started selling men's clothes. Any men that walk through that threshold to get any type of garment out of Forever 21 to wear for himself is forever deemed a bitch. <laughs> I'm telling you, ladies, y'all got to watch these young niggas, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I like hot, you know, current fashion. I'm a student of hip-hop as well. But, however, we got to draw the line somewhere. You know what I'm talking about? A man's jeans and pants are supposed to be activated by gravity. When a nigga loosen his belt, his pants supposed to fall down to his ankles, revealing his glorious, ashy-ass legs. Because you know niggas only put lotion on the exposed parts of the body. Now, if you don't see a nigga ashy ass legs when he don't do that belt, something wrong. <laughs> now, ladies, I'm saying, though, you know, think about it. Next time you and your man about to have sex, especially if you dating one of these young niggas, and you and your man about to have sex, and you over there looking sexy, you know, you taking your jeans off, unbuttoning them slowly and shit, and peeling them off, and you look in the corner, and this nigga over here wiggling, trying to get out of his shit, too. <laughs> Nigga jumping and shit talking about, but hey, pull. He, who's a real bitch? He didn't want you to, man, look here, man. Tired of these young niggas. Don't worry about it, though, ladies. You know, thanks. You know, this is what a wonderful time that we live. You know what I mean? You know, I feel like as an older black man, I feel good being able to say that I can kind of help, you know, contribute to my society and, and, and to the furtherance of our civilization. Because thanks to the advent of the gas station pill, old niggas is fucking young pussy all night. Sugar daddies really want that sugar. You know, I know some of you ladies is young with some voracious sexual appetites. And you look for some carnal desires to be fulfilled in ways in which... In which the regular man can't do. So I can stop by the gas station tonight where they have an array... They have a vast array of animals in which I can channel the inner spirit. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> and Rhino, the old news, I don't know. I don't know. They got the orangutan and shit. They got the water buffalo and the silverback, god damn it. I fucked up and got me one of them cheetahs the other night. I told the bitch I'm going to beat that pussy all night. I hit that pussy about 10 minutes and was done. Damn, wrong pill. Fucking with that cheetah. Am I the only nigga that like that little scent around his mouth after you eat some good pussy? Like you ride around like niggas really, you know, ladies, you got to be thankful and proud of that. When a nigga ride around with the scent of your little trim around his mustache for the rest of the day, you know what I'm saying? A nigga really, really holds you in high esteem. You got high reverence for you. You know what I'm talking about? But you can't put your mouth on everybody, man. One time when I was like 19, I put my mouth on a bitch and shit. When I finished, it looked like I went to a bad barber. I'm just kidding. I ain't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Zuni want to find out, bitch. 
Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> when my real niggas said, make some noise, this motherfucker, man. Shit, I got my father, man. I wanted to say I'm so thankful, man. I got a chance to bring my pops to the show, y'all. This is a dope thing. Give it up for my pops. He over there somewhere. Hey, that I I ain't seen him that much, so I, I'm not sure which one is him. Uh, oh, that's it, right? <laughs> <laughs> nah, my pops here and shit, man. You know, nigga told me when I got on TV, first seen the show, he like, damn, they made you Jesus, huh? I'm like, yeah, man, that was dope. He's like, yeah, that, that must mean I'm God, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you yeah, just like God. I ain't never seen a nigga. They never seen a picture of him or nothing, nigga. <laughs> ah, I was just fucking with y'all, man. You know, here at the Get It From God Music and Comedy Festival. Give it up for the Get It From God Music and Comedy Festival. Shout out to my nigga Craig Smith, man. One of the hardest working light skinned niggas in the game. Like, he really, like, Craig Smith really works hard doing what he does, production, writing, you know, putting on these amazing things. Craig is the brain behind all this stuff. And shout out to him for really working because everybody know most light-skinned people use their melanin deficiency to get through life. <laughs> look, look, light-skinned people get mad right now. I ain't never, I've never used my melanin deficiency to an <laughs> I'm fucking with you, I'm fucking with you, I'm fucking with you. Shout out to y'all, man. Mm -hmm. See, this how you like it right here, man. On Caffeine, Craig Facts, Get It From God Music and Comedy Festivals. Niggas do what they want to over here right now. This nigga Shady Chris calling prostitutes right now. Ain't nobody got no money. Shady the kind of nigga. Shady be talking prostitutes out of their business and shit. <laughs> Dirty nigga. I fuck with y'all. What's the difference between my baby mama and a deli sandwich? Mustard, pickles, and bread. <laughs> yeah, because that pussy look like pastrami meat. <laughs> I'm just playing like... Look, she's like, I know I like pastrami. You can't eat nothing now? Gotta stop acting like that. I'm fucking with y'all, man. I just want to tell y'all, you know, I love you. And I'm going to get up out of here, man. Uh, I'm Slink Johnson. Make sure you check me out on all your social networks, at Slink Johnson. You want to hit me up, you want a quick, quick reply, the best place to hit me is at Cash App, dollar sign Slink Johnson. Make sure you hit a nigga quick, and I'm going to respond with a crisp blue heart. So fuck with your boy, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm get, you got to let him have it, man. A crisp, you know, for a speedy reply, like, damn, that nigga really was watching. Yep. <laughs> Fuck with your boy, man. I'm Slink Johnson. If you see me running from somebody, let me in the car, man. I love you to death. Smoke yours, baby. All right. God, God, God. Y'all know y'all know what time it is. It's the call back portion of the show. Uh Big J had to leave. We got J. Ali filling in. This is uh not this is not a smaller jaw. This is actually J. <laughs> what up, y'all? What up, what up, what up? I'm on here. Let's get it. We in here like swimmer. Let's go ahead and listen to this verse, uh this first voicemail. Go ahead and have at it, Jay. Yo, what to do, kid? Man, I got a dilemma, man. My uh... My old lady got pregnant by another nigga, and she still want to continue the relationship, man. Shout out Charles to the game. Oh, uh, goddamn. Continue dealing with her. Shit, let a nigga know something. Uh, this is easy. Yeah. 
Let's go on and get to him, man. Let's call him. That is, well, first thing he got to realize, that's not his old lady no more. <laughs> you know, if she letting a nigga nut in her, that is his old lady. Damn. I would have been gone. You? Yeah, I can't stay. My nigga, I'm out. Would you babysit? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Bitch, when you leave the house, this baby got to leave the house. That baby gonna be on the porch all day till you get off work. I know I ain't working, but I ain't I ain't watching another man's baby. Oh. Hello? Hey, you got more than a dilemma, man. You better choke her ass out, man. No, I'm joking with you. This is Craig from Craig Facts. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> What's, <up? laughs> What's going on with you, man? Hey man, man cool. I wouldn't be mad if you practiced WWF moves on her. I wouldn't tell you to do it. But what I'm saying is a lesser man would be angry, bro. What kind of relationship y'all got? Y'all in an open relationship? Talk to me about the relationship. Man, um, the shit kind of be uh, off and on, really, G. You hear me? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I so, you. yeah, so, but what happened was, um, I guess during the time we got down, got back on and shit, you hear me? Right. Oh. Uh, I work out of town and shit, so I'm all the way back and forth and shit. Like I'm a welder and shit. So when we so the past holiday and shit, Red got back on no good terms and shit. So long term short, she tell me she's pregnant. So I said, "Cool, fuck it, you know." Time to be a daddy. Yeah, he ain't got a kid, it. You feel me? But right. come to find out, it ain't mine. You feel me? <laughs> so, but but she want me to be on some old, you know, play step dad and shit. Still, I'm like, oh. I ain't feeling it. No, no. Nah, nah. So I'm pretty sure every time y'all was off, she probably was on with the other brother. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> more than likely. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole situation. Yeah. Okay, so I was under the impression that she was cheating on you. If she's not cheating on you, then she didn't do nothing wrong. Nah. You know what I mean? Nah, like, not really. Just, yeah. But but she did, but she low key tried to, you know, like she knew she like she never tell me she was you know doing a thing. Right. So that's my uh, my kind of problem, really. It was like she low key tried to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think I know what you're saying. What did she low key try to do? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you know, it'll be a little different if if she was telling me like, okay, when we got back on, she like on some old yeah, you know, you know, let a nigga know that you know what you got going on. Like you know what I'm saying? You right. smashing nigga around and shit, and I ain't you know I ain't telling me. So That's J- fucking me up too. Right, right. We got Jay Ali on the line with us, world famous producer. Uh, Jay Ali, what's your take on this? Well, y'all wasn't in a relationship, right? You said, right? Y'all just messing nah, around? Just, yeah, yeah. Off and on, just, you know. Why? What? We what tried it. Oh, y'all tried mm-hmm. a relationship. Right. Then, you know, this shit didn't work out, but we just stayed cool. Then, you know, we were still, you know, dibbing and dabbing. You real? It's a tough situation, but do you want to be with her? Yeah, he want to be with her. He, he, he <laughs> nah, that, he, it's all good if you still love her. It's okay, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's a that's a tough one, man. I mean, to yeah. be, to, it's different meeting a chick and she has a child. Yeah, that's different. But you with her while the baby is growing in her. Right. Is that's a whole different? You know what I'm saying? That's a whole yeah. different thing, man. Um, yeah, yeah. When did you find out it wasn't your baby? Huh? When y'all took a because test I, or something? Y'all found it. You took a test, and that's when you found out it wasn't your baby. No, nah, really. How I found out, really, you know, pushing the issue going with her to, you know, what I'm saying, to a pharmacy set and seeing where, uh, where the doctor told her how far along she was. They let me know that that ain't my baby. You feel? Oh, oh, right, you. right, right. I got you. Yeah. Yeah, that's a cold situation. Oh. That's a cold situation. If you're going to stay with it, don't beat up on that baby. Don't beat, don't whoop that baby's <laughs> ass. If you're going to yeah. be in the baby's life, it can't know that you ain't the, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Fair. Right, Some niggas right. will stay, but they'll be whooping that baby. <laughs> For real. That's real <laughs> shit. Yeah, you choking out a seven-year-old over, uh, <laughs> over ham and cheese. <laughs> Wait, my baby anyway, by the way. Yeah, you jazzy Jeff and that baby out the front door every day to go to, to, go to school. <laughs> 
I tell a bag to go to the fridge and bring my beer. You come back with, with a you know, bottle of water. I'm eating that ass. I mean, sure, you you crushing Budweiser cans on the baby's head as a punishment. Like, I mean, why you gonna stick around and abuse the baby? Treat the baby like a normal baby, right? That why did you funny. people's elbow that baby? <laughs> you, are you a strong dude, man? For the hey, tell everybody your name and where you live at. Hey, see, call me Blue, man. I'm from uh, Mississippi, man. Nasty. Mississippi. Mississippi, man. What's going on with them racist crackers down there, man? Did they really get rid of all them brothers? And uh, only hire white people? Nah, but nah, but they uh in a couple of counties over, man. And, uh, black dude had got killed by a bunch of white uh, white boys and shit, man. Okay, wow. I'm sorry to hear. Yeah, that. yeah. We need yeah, to bring yeah. light to that. Uh, if you got an article or something, we can look up. What's just look up a couple counties over? A nigga got killed by white people. We gonna find it? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I, <laughs> nah, I have to read really, it. Uh, I had to find that shit, my nigga, and uh, shoot this, you know what I'm saying, shoot it to you. You hear me? Hey, man, we'd appreciate it for real, man. And we, we thank you for calling in. Get us get, get us that info so we can make some noise for that brother, whoever it is. Rest in peace. Right. Oh, really? All right, we're going to let you go, brother. If I owe you something, get it from God. God, God, God. God, God, God. That nigga sound like he got a pickup truck yes, and trailer. Yes, to yo. Nah, man. <laughs> okay, let's call him back. Hey. Hold on. Calling in, I like the show. Just want to call and say y'all doing a good job. He's out. Is that the same dude? Uh, that's another he said peace out. Let's call him. Oh, <laughs> said I'm wise enough to know. Hello. What's going on, man? Thank you for calling in the Craig Facts to Call Back Show, brother. Who's, what's your name and where you calling from? Man, it's Chris from South Carolina. <laughs> what's popping? Craig, Craig was good. What's popping, Chris from South Carolina? Did you see the Jalen Green footage? Oh uh, no, what it was talking about? Oh my gosh, you got to see it. Jalen Green is a player I touted in the NBA as being probably possibly a Kobe S type of guard if he worked on his game. They found footage of him right. and his teammate dry humping. Uh, that's that's <laughs> sus to me. That's beyond <laughs> sus. sus. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. If you found out MJ was dry humping Scotty, would he still be the greatest player of all time to you? Hell no. Why not? <laughs> Man, I ain't fooling with that. I ain't with that stuff. <laughs> Hell no. I take this I can't shirt even off. I can't even roll with you if you was my partner. Talk about it. I need you to see that footage, bro. It's so, sho it's so shocking. It's crazy. Bro. It's incredible. I'm, I'm going to have to check it out. I'm going to have to check it out. I'm going to have to check it out when I get time. I'm about to go somewhere in a few. Okay, cool, man. Where you, go? Where you going, man? It's going to be bras there? Nah, me and my <laughs> wife. Um, It's my birthday today, so, you oh, know, we're going to top golf. Happy birthday, Mike. Oh, they got Top Golf? Where you at? South you said South Carolina? Yeah, like Greenville. They got Top Golf in Greenville? That's surprising. It's close to Charlotte and Atlanta. Okay. I had no I just wouldn't think they had I thought that was a Vegas and Cali thing. I didn't even know niggas could golf nah, in the South. Nah. <laughs> nah, Greenville big. Corey been out here. Corey Holcomb been out here. Yeah, Corey, 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 he he been to what is that? Stardom or Stardust or some shit like that. But I mean, I, zone or something okay but look man we appreciate you taking the call thank you for calling in and the support support means a lot to us brother so man, man thanks for the call back man i love the show man y'all keep it up man respect yes, the brother and if i owe you something get it from god 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 good dude next call yo craig what up hit a nigga back man it's your boy julian man from cincinnati Still driving these damn pets around, man. Bored as fuck, coming back, man. Goddamn Wyoming, boy. Ain't nothing to see out here from motherfucking, uh, just hills, mountains, and grass, motherfucker. Bored in the motherfucker, man. Y'all got the nigga back. Talk to <laughs> I know that life, being on that road away from the house, man. He out there bored. In a mug. You eat a lot of uh, Carl Jr. hunt on the road. Man, they got other restaurants in those parts of the country. They got Checkers, which is like a, a rally. Checkers is a rally. 
Then they got like these, what's that chicken spot, man? Any truckers out there, tell me that chicken spot uh, that be at some truck stops in the in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but yeah, if he's in Wyoming, he's bored than a motherfucker. And yeah, so let's go ahead and call this brother back. I, for, I, I forget what he say his name is. What up? Stay away from them lot lizards, man. You in Wyoming, huh? This is Craig from the Callback Show. And Jay Ali, how you doing? Oh, man, I'm all right, man. Hey. I'm just in the middle of uh, editing the damn video. Okay. Get my little video shit going on the tube. You're trying to get your YouTube cracking so you can quit when you get back to uh, get back to the crib, huh? <laughs> uh, not, Matt. Listen, I am. I told bro, I said, man, we got too much wrong. Um, Skills with this merch, man. Like, I ain't about to be out here miss. I don't miss my daughter's birthday. That shit hit me. I'm like, nah, we, I got to get get my uh, skills back right with the merch, man. And making tees and painting shoes and shit. Hey, man, get to it. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. So I got a question. Did you see the Josh Christopher and Jalen Green footage? No. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh, man. Just look it up, man. Look it up and call us back, man, because I want to get your I want to get your feedback on this. So apparently, Jalen Green, you know who that is, right? What he um, what he play again, Jalen Green? He played for the Rockets. He played two guard. Man, you gotta look okay. up. Okay, look up the footage. I gotta. I, I'm gonna have to look, man. Look it up and call us back. All right, all right. Because I know you're going to be hot, man. Look it up and call us back. We want to hear what you got to say. Jalen Green and who? Jalen Green and Josh Christopher. Josh Christopher, okay. Yep, all right, yep. I'm about to check it out. All right, hit us back. All right, God, God, God. We'll go to the next call. Hey, what up, nigga? Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, man? Hey, I got a question. I ain't going to ask it to you coming back, though. God, God, God. All right, call this brother. That nigga, uh, hang up on his ass. If he, if, if please he, leave your message. Okay, here we go. Seven zero two three five eight nine six one three. Hey man, we calling you back. Call back show. You left a voicemail. We trying to hear what the question is. God, God, God. Anything you want to say, Jolly? Hey, we calling you back. We don't know the question. God, God, God. Hang up on this buster. <laughs> That's the energy that nigga had with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you guys say? Craig Smack. Let me go back. Craig Smack. <laughs> what is this? He said, I don't know. Call him. Craig Smack. Have J. Ali roast this dude. Hello? God, God, God. What's your name? Where you calling from, brother? No way. Craig Schmidt. Where is yeah, my name is Paul Martinez. I'm coming straight out of the L.A. city, my boy. Oh, you in L.A., man. You on the phone with J.I. Lee, man. Go ahead and shoot. You had, um, a, you had a question for us. Go ahead and shoot. Um, yeah, man. So, I basically, I ain't going to lie. This question is a little more aimed for you. How have you always been that funny, like that quick off top, like off your feet, or did was that like a skill that you had to develop over time? Nah, I mean I always been funny like that, but 
I did implement some skill as far as coming up with like a everything I do has a little bit of strategy or technique to it. But the funny has always okay. been there. I just I just kind of found my own style. Like you know, Buster Rhymes found his own style as a rapper. You did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's all me, okay, though. Okay. Even before I found a style, you know, I was always talented as shit. You know what I mean? Why, you thinking about doing comedy? I ain't gonna, I mean, I ain't gonna lie. In my, my friend group, I, I'm considered, you know, the funny one. Even though myself, I'm considered myself funny or whatever, but. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, I've been watching you since I was middle. I'm 21 years old now, but I've been watching oh, you shit. since I was middle school. Eighth grade. Dang, that so make I, me feel you. old. <laughs> no. <laughs> middle school, huh? Wait, <laughs> man. You said what? Damn. I said middle school. That's crazy. That's dope, though. I appreciate the support, man. It means a lot to me, bro. No, yeah, of course. Like, you're doing your thing, man. I support everything you do. You know, I check up on your channel every other day. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I, I guess you could say you are somewhat part of my daily routine. <laughs> That's dope, man. It, it feels feels dope to have dope-ass fans. Let me ask you a question, though. Did you see the Jalen Green shit? Oh, uh, man, to be honest, I did. I, I should tell you this, man. I actually have a new kid right now, a newborn with me, man. So I've been, I've been trying to adapt to this father life, man. I ain't going to lie with uh, you, but um, congr- I, I will definitely get a chance to catch up on everything. Congrats, yeah, yeah, no, bro. congratulations, bro. That me, that is dope, man. I wish we could uh, clap it up for you where you can hear it, man. But it feels, you know, that's a dope feeling to be a father. Yeah. Cherish that and have, a, have plenty more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. <laughs> All right, man. Well, we're yes, going to let sir. you go, bro. We're going to let you go. Love yeah, and respect. Man, I appreciate y'all, man. I pre- Thank you so much for calling back, man. This means so much to me. God bless you, bro. All good. Love yes, and sir. respect. God, God, God. Oh, God. That dude right there. How long have we been going, man? 17 minutes. Okay, we'll do two more. Hey, Chris. Uh, show, you look like a free-dry, sloppy joke. <laughs> uh, Kwan built like 37 fax machines taped together. Uh, on the side, you look like you ain't never had no pussy in your life. King Jack off of that, man. Um, you see who else on there? Those, those, you look black. That's all I got to say. They sound like he hiding under his bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's call him and roast this clown. So you want war, huh? You got something for him, Jay? Yeah. Heck yeah. Bro. Nigga, you hiding in the closet, nigga? Hey, this is Craig from Craig Facts. What's going on with you, you professional whisperer voice, nigga? <laughs> <laughs> hey. He says, show built hey, like a freestyle sloppy Joe. That's funny <laughs> to the motherfucker. <laughs> Go ahead, bro. Hey. All you niggas is ugly, though. Ah-ha. Smoker. Hey, hey. ass niggas. Hey. You got a microphone to your mouth and all your dreams. Like, I want to be at a ham, too. <laughs> Yo, I don't even know what it sound like. You on my Bluetooth in the car right now. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, hey, we you, we you, on your you head, know, you goofy. Hey, ugly ass, hey, ugly ass nigga, you know what this is. Let's play ball, my nigga. What's going on, play ball? What's popping, boy? Oh, man, well, bless. I'm, I'm chilling. Hell yeah, Hey, man. look, I don't know who on the show right now, but... Who on the show? Somebody say some names real quick. I'm going to roast their ass. It's me and J.I. Lee. J.I. Lee look like you with no hair. Dark skin nigga <laughs> ball. Yo. <laughs> hey, J.I. Lee. Yeah. Hey, you weightlifting non-buff ass nigga. Look, <laughs> that video. Look, that video you and John got that I be crippin'. Yeah. That's yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. <Boy. laughs> hey, hey, look. Stop taking creatine, my nigga. You know, <laughs> you'll get buff one day, my nigga. Hey, nigga, I had to do they that. They got for new the, shit out now. I had to do that for the scene, nigga. Come get in that gym with yeah. me, though. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I, I need to on the real. <laughs> hey, Craig, I'm still gonna, I mean, I'm still gonna sock you out when I see you, nigga. Ah, I think ah, 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 I got one of his so. braids in his mouth. Why you talking? <laughs> <laughs> it's how I get Yo. the rubber bands out. Yo. <laughs> Yo. Hey, you I got to oil them up, man. They, they kind of dry. You, hey, you in Atlanta, nigga. I'm going to be out here soon, man. So don't, uh, bring your girlfriend, yeah, not I'm your boyfriend. Nah, I'm in Texas right now. 
Okay, only bring your girlfriend to the show, not your boyfriend. <laughs> That's a bit. That's a bit. I got you. I got you. Put right. a short on, my nigga, because I know you over there. All right, well, look, man. Hey, make sure you come to the show, though, when I'm in your part of town, man. We can't wait to roast with you in person, man. You're a good dude, bro. Hell yeah. Are we going to take this yeah, next call? Hey, uh? Hang your chin up when you see me, man. Hang your chin up when you see me. <laughs> all right, bro. I'm going right. to fuck you right in it. All right. <laughs> all right. Love and respect, man, for all your stuff. Get all it from God. Same, bro. God, God, God. God. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. That's it's a big crazy. dude, too. You're a big old dude, man. Uh, Who is this? Uh, play this one. Craig, 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 facts. What's good? I like your show, man. Calling from Buffalo, New York. I say it in Spanish. Craig, Craig, Craig. You know how you say God, God, God. Yo, yo, yo. Well, that's how you say God in Spanish. Good, good, good. What time is it, man? What time? I mean, not what time. How long we been on here? There we go. It's the last one. Yeah. I don't believe it. What's going on? It's Gary Garuffalo from Buffalo. What's, it's Craig Fax, man. Talk to us, man. What you got going on, man? I don't believe it's Craig Fax. Yo, you the man, man. I, I appreciate you, man. As a 52-year-old, that I don't be like, oh, you can't really not know somebody that's like, nah, yeah. I'm like, man, Craig, man. Los Angeles County, sure. Man, I, I appreciate it, man. You in Buffalo, so what kind of uh, what's your preferred drugs? Crack or heroin? <laughs> being from Buffalo. Well, <laughs> 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 now I hear Buffalo. Now listen, listening to Gris, listening to Griselda ben, Benny the Butcher. I got. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Benny and them. Yeah, you know what? Though? Um, my daughter. My dog be singing with them. She ain't making like them, but yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah. Nah, I'm, I, 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 smoke, I smoke weed. I just started smoking weed again. So let me ask you a question. Yeah, is, is Buffalo what is Buffalo with DMX is talking about when he say an upstate nigga? You an upstate nigga, B? Is that what he talking about? Right. Uh, yeah. So how do upstate niggas feel about New York niggas yeah. constantly disrespecting upstate niggas? <laughs> Hello? You there? I'm yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, My bad. I think that was my Bluetooth. Okay, cool. Damn, now. I can't believe it. You sound like you're talking from a prison cell. We can't hear you. Yeah, it's a, yeah. Yo, to me, straight up, straight up. Let me tell you. To me, you famous, kid. Like, Kevin Hart, like all them boys. I'm like, come on, man. You do this. And I'm going on, like, little sites, putting shit on. Like, I might only have, like, 100 pop, you know. Yeah. Watch it, but I don't care. You know what I'm I appreciate I it. I appreciate you, kid. Hey, that means yeah, a lot to don't. me. Much respect, man. man. Love, dope, love and respect man, for that, much man. Much respect to you. I appreciate the call back, man. I can't, I can't believe it. I feel like, yo, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm call y'all back again, you know, so we can kick it. You know what I mean? Because I, I'm about kicking it. Because like, I be listening, and you just be saying some real shit, like about like, uh, uh you were saying some shit like about like friendship. I'm like, damn, this, this is gonna be breaking shit down. I, I be feeling like that, you know, like with the uh, narcissist shit. I'm like, damn. Man, I I appreciate that, bro. That that really mean a lot to me, man. Especially all the way out there in Buffalo, man. Make sure you keep calling in, bro. Yeah. And uh, love yo, her. Yo, um, um, before, before you hang up, though, straight up, um, my daughter is Go Gav. You know, G O G E V one two three. I'm not no promoter. I'm not nothing. I just feel like she could have made it, but she's down with them Griselda boys. Yeah, she can sing. I wanted to do something with you. Let's put it like that. <laughs> hey, let's run it. Send me the track. What, I'm gonna right, follow her right now. What's her uh, What's uh, her Instagram? She's on YouTube. She's on YouTube. Go G G G O G E V one two three. But you know, next time I kick it with you, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I'll yeah. inform her. Like she's like somebody. Like even somebody like a famous comedian was like, "Yo, oh yeah, we got um the joint right down the street that he do." And a, like a, a comedian, Craig, I, I forget his name. Like he's like in movies. He was like, "Yo, how come you're not famous?" Oh my God, he told my daughter that. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah but yo, if, if you're ever in Buffalo, you can come right to my house talking about the hood. Yeah, I live right in the right in the hood. We're gonna, I live right down to the hood. We're gonna make it happen. <laughs> we're gonna make it happen, man. Hopefully, we run into Jim Kelly and Thurman Thomas while we out there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
No, that question you asked me earlier, that's what you got to ask. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, we're going to take this next so call, man. I appreciate you, bro. Much, right, thanks, Craig. much respect. You too, All right, God, God, All right, God. Bro. <laughs> God!